took a stroll downtown this evening when I heard music echo through the night. The same old songs that I heard the night before, so I started running so I wouldn't be too late. I didn't think that I would ever see your face again, but I was wrong. Yeah, I was wrong. When I got close, my heart was pumping. Thank you for watching the After Files live stream. This is not a professional production. We don't know why anyone watches this thing, but we're glad you do. And now, to kick off the show is everyone's favorite sidekick, the one, the only, Hecklefish. That's good. Audio, you hear me? I don't know what Victoria is doing down there. Uh, tell me in the in the chat. I see levels. The levels look good, but uh, you know it wouldn't be a Wild Files after stream if we weren't having uh, technical problems. And it's definitely gonna there's gonna be problems tonight. I think I'm prepared for them though. We're gonna be fine. So, uh, pretty good showing for the premiere. That was nice. And look, I'll be honest. This is not my favorite episode. Not my favorite one. I like the weirder ones a little bit better. But it was Indrid Cold was one of the most requested. One of the most requested episodes. Um, hang on, I, I, did you hear the beep? Victoria's down there. You hear me, Victoria? Yeah, she gave me a thumbs up. Yeah, so Indrid Cold was one of the most requested episodes. So we figured we'll do it. Any um, any believers? Any Indrid Cold believers out there? I saw a couple in the premiere. Who's here? Ladybird's here. Sloth Sage. It's very excited. I see you. Hey, John Edgeworth. Mateo, I see you. Leonid's there. Leonid, that's one of my it's my, my favorite meteor shower. Uh, William Slater's here. Psycho Ward, Colorado Kid. LM. LM does not sure. Yeah, I mean, Woody never went back on his story. He lost his job. He lost his family. He lost his reputation for a while. He never recanted the story. He moved away from um, Parkersburg is where he was from. He moved to Cleveland for a while. I, I assumed to be near his kids and the ex-wife who ran off with a UFO investigator investigating Woody's story. <sighs> Scandalous. Scandalous for 1963. Um, but Woody did eventually move back to Parkersburg. He became a minister and I think was finally accepted into the community as not so much a whack job. Um, all right. We've got private chats in here. You know, I read those out loud. It's a link to Gino's story hour. And I don't know. She's thumbs up. I, I see them down there. If you're new here, I see that. I see their faces. I see their heads. And it, it, Jenny's showing a lot of skin tonight. So she'll have to fix that before I bring her back up here. Yeah, there you are. All right, so I see that we've got a link to Gino's story hour. I don't know what the story is, but that's fun. That makes it fun. David wasn't the same guy who wrote the book on Valiant for a minister. That's true. He was. That was um, Strangers at the Pentagon, which uh, is which is almost plagiarized from the from the day the Earth stood still. Brian Pickle, Fear the Crab Cat. I was looking for my Crab Cat shirt. I can't find it, but I did find my Mel's Hole shirt. And, you know, every time we, hey, let me see if I could, let's see if I can even show you. Every week, there's a custom t-shirt for the episode that's, it's only up there for a short time. I just wanted it to be up there for like a couple of days. The girls went up there forever. 
So I think the compromise is two weeks. You have two weeks to get the shirts. They're designed by SMK, a.k.a. Rob, the official artist of the Y-Files, who does great stuff. And that's the injured cold t-shirt. I, th I think it might be the first time I'm seeing that design. That's fun. The creepy teeth. Yeah, so the Grinning Man, there's not much about the Grinning Man. There's... Uh, it. John Keel was the first guy to report on that story. There's no evidence of any of it happening. You know, he said, um, Keel said that there was this rash of sightings all over that area of New Jersey during the during that week when the sighting happened, but there, but there wasn't. But there wasn't. But John Keel was known to exaggerate to sell books. So the smiling man was this giant humanoid figure that these guys saw on the other side of the New Jersey turnpike. And if you know what that is, you know it's... You can't cross it. So he was seven feet tall, pale skin, no ears, no nose, and just had this giant creepy smile. And in the, the story, he actually started chasing these kids, and they booked. But I, that might have changed later. But in the, the first story, Keel mentioned him in a couple of his books. First story, he started chasing the kids, and they booked. And uh, they didn't report it. But then other people were reporting the UFOs that allegedly happened around the same time. So then they came forward with it. But uh, John Keel is the only source we have for the story. But I'm, I was amazed at how widespread the Grinning Man legend was from basically a paragraph in, in a book. You know, Indrid Cold got uh, – he didn't get much coverage in the book either. Now that I think of it. The Mothman got a whole chapter. Indrid Cold just a little bit. But the Grinning Man, that's a legend that stuck. I think it's just – the smile, the smile is, that's the creepy part. If he's, when a monster is angry and chasing you, it's just, that's no big deal. That's, that's every day. But when a monster smiles, that's, that's, that's extra creepy. Back off says Joker vibes. Yeah, I guess. For, is it Jokery? I can't tell with the, with the weird glasses. Kyle says he loves the channel, but dude, this episode is not par. Hey, that's fair enough. It's not for everybody. Kyle, I'll check out your channel later. I'll see how your videos are. Did the Woody's daughter fart at 3403? Um, that was that was the the blink squirt that I just put in there. Uh, it's from SpongeBob. And no one watches SpongeBob anymore. And once in a while, uh, Sp <laughs> SpongeBob characters when they when they just kind of stare and blank, there's that weird squirt sound. It makes me laugh every time. So whenever I do a, a commercial, usually when I blink at the end, the squirt sound is in there. So she was just staring. Like she said, oh, you want to talk to Andrew Cold, you go through me. And then she just kind of stared the guy down. That was from Hellier uh, season two, episode two. Just staring them down. And I'm watching I'm like, man, this woman is just staring for, for ever so long to stare. But I wanted to keep it all in because it just is uncomfortable. But then she did a blink in the middle. And of course, you got to go, you got to put it in there. Nikki G likes SpongeBob, of course. MRF, too many teeth for a human. Donnie W's there. I see you. Good to see you. Tempac, how'd your mirror experiment go? I haven't done that. Um, talking about the Kozarev mirrors, which was a that was a fun episode a few weeks back. The Kozarev mirrors is, is this contraption invented by the Kozarev was a physicist in the early tw early 20th century. So apparently you, you build these mirrors out of aluminum in, in the right shape, and they focus the energy of the universe into your body. And you can astrally project, remote view, or travel through time if you build the mirror the right way. I have not built one uh, yet because I'm too busy with the, with the channel, but there is a group on Facebook that formed after the episode um, – to build a Kozarev mirror. So I, you know, I don't have the link handy. I haven't checked it out in a few weeks, but I'm sure you can find it's on Facebook and everyone's contributing their ideas and their skills and talents to build these mirrors. Imagine they get it to work. If anyone's, if one of you guys are watching this, if you let me know if you get it to work. Uh, Jay Doss is here. Not a Gavin Newsom fan. Fair enough. John Richards, lizard people. Andy Sutter, Andy Sutter with a great question. Can vampires use that mirror? I guess they probably couldn't, right? Vampires can't see the reflection. Uh, Christy Valdez, episode on Las Vegas crash. I covered that a few weeks ago when it happened, but someone was saying in the Patreon chat just earlier that there was a new UFO crash in Vegas. I couldn't find it. Um, but if anyone knows that, let me know in the chat. And speaking of, I mean, it's a great time to segue into a plug, right? I mean, we got to pay the bills. Is twice a week, um, there's a, 
on Discord, we do a Patreon only chat, and it's it's a live stream. Cameras are on. Um, the whole team is there, and your cameras are on, so everybody gets a chance to talk because it's not like the chat. The chat is crazy, right? I can. It's really hard to follow. Um, but on Patreon, it's super easy to follow because there's not that many of us. And for three bucks a month, you get all kinds of perks, and that's one of them. So right before the premieres on Thursday nights, we do that live stream for Patreon members only, and then tomorrow morning. We do another one for Patreon members. That one runs it, it runs until Jen gets bored or until Zeb, the, the super fan, says that we're allowed to go. So that, that can run a long time. Nona Detroit says vampires hate Chrome. That's probably true. Ted, Ted wants to see Jen. Patience, little one, patience. The dude, 1764 feet of crab cat. Monster 1026 liked the episode. I appreciate that. James, you're heading out already. All right, man. All right, so coming up, coming up, I've got a couple of weird videos that I wanted to run by you to see if we can debunk them. One is, did you see the one about the goblin running in the forest? I mean, of course, it's got to be fake, right? He's wearing a backpack, but it looks pretty good. So I want you to see it, and if you can debunk it, let me know in the chat because I couldn't find it, but to be honest, I was running behind. I didn't do my homework that well this week, but, but that's a cool video. Victoria found a really interesting one. Um, super old tree in, uh, I think it's Flint, Michigan. Super old tree that something happened, maybe a lightning strike or whatever, uh, opens the tree up and the guy finds something inside that shouldn't be there. So that's coming up. Um, we're going to briefly talk about Avi, Avi Loeb, the Harvard professor who's, he's he, basically he's on a boat in the ocean dragging a magnet around to scoop up alien parts that's that's what he's doing he he articulates it smarter than that but that's what he's doing so he is pulling stuff up from the ocean that is confirmed not from this planet that's that's without question what what there is debate about is whether it's from alien craft or it's from a meteorite we don't really know and it's and it's hard to figure out but we'll talk about that and we're going to go through the um uh the Kumbaga, the Kumbagars, uh, the Kumbagas, Kumbagas, the the Turkish UFO story. Remember, it, it was like 2007, 2008. The same UFO kept showing up and showing up, and I've always been fascinated by that that UFO sighting. It's it kind of has been showing up on UFO Twitter a little bit the last couple of months, and I cannot find an official debunking of this UFO, and it's 15 years old. But it's a crazy UFO video because because there's a bunch of them. It's clearly the same craft. But in at least one of them, you could see through the window that there are aliens in there. Big head, eyes. It's crazy. So people have said it could be this. You know, it's probably not aliens. It's probably this. But it's not definitively debunked. So if anyone can debunk that, I would like to see that in the chat. Taz gets a suntan with, with the Kozarev mirrors. That's cool. Jeff Harrison, UFO Twitter. Yeah, the, if you're on Twitter, there's there's a lot of UFO action on there. I mean, just do hashtag UFO Twitter and you'll you'll see all kinds of stuff. Hey, hang on. We, I told you there'd be technical problems. I'm move, trying to move the chat around. And uh, oh, and, uh, what else? There's, uh, there's my Twitter handle and Instagram as well if you want to. If you want to follow my files on Twitter, it's a good way to get a hold of me. Uh, Nona, Dr. Lear, UFO vid. Uh, yes, that's what we're talking about. Uh, Brandon, the White House cocaine ghost. Yeah, that just vanished, huh? Oof. Rose Blossom, good to see you. Kevin Kwan is here. Hello. GGGG Goldman's there. Ryan James Barr. Uh, Victoria says the truth is out there. Jeremiah wants more CIA videos. You got it. Those are among my favorite, but I can't do, I can't, I mean, something like three of the last five episodes have been just pounding on the CIA. I don't want to, don't want to push my luck, right? You know, when you, when you're playing Russian roulette and you spin, spin that chamber and pull the trigger, one of the, one of, there's a chance, there's a chance uh, that it's going to get you. And I, I shouldn't use that in that analogy when talking about the CIA. I mean, they don't really kill people, do they? Let's see what's going on with uh with super chats. 
Quantum Sledgehammer, thank you for the 1059. A peaceful futuristic society with 1960s sensibilities in a high-tech setting on a planet almost identical to Earth. Derenberger didn't visit Lanulos. He visited the Jetsons, minus the nudity. Uh, that's true. But look, when we watch the Jetsons Quantum, you know, as you know, as 11, 12, 13-year-old boys, you always hoped is that you see a little Judy action, didn't you? Let's be honest. For our drums is there. Twenty dollars. Thank you for that. Yo yo yo. You know, uh, maybe the smiling man is just happy being cold. He probably has a lot of stock invested in icy drinks and slush puppies. Another reason he smiles, I guess. Love your show. Keep it up, AJ and crew. Thank you so much for our drums. That's for our drums, the official uh, drum channel of the, the White House. And there is Laval U crew. Thank you for the ten dollars and I appreciate the support of the channel. We couldn't do this without you and. Yeah, I tried to do as much fun stuff on Thursday nights for you as I can, but I've been very honest that this is a show and it's also a fundraiser. <laughs> just, just keep things going. So I appreciate the support. Uh, Lava Crew, you actually made me tear up at the end. That's nice to hear. I don't like to, I like to leave with a good positive message if I can. Last week, not so much with the AI, right? That that left that ended dark. That needed to. That needed to be dark. I needed people to be upset from that video, and and they they were according to Twitter. Um, but usually, I try to leave with leave with something relatable, uplifting, inspiring. And basically, the message is just let us know the truth because we're we're adult enough to 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 accept it. And maybe if if we had something else to focus on, like aliens, we would stop focusing on wars and all that the petty stuff that we're dealing with but i think i talked about this last week the i watched that interview and i think it was on the hill last week i didn't know where it was but i'm pretty sure it was on the hill where the reporter was was saying how he covered ufos for a long time and now that he's now that he's convinced that it's real and that it's true he's actually in a bit of a crisis because of it he's and i understand that because it's there's it's one thing to think about UFOs and aliens, because of course they exist, but it's, it's, it's mysterious. It's, it's almost at a distance, but how would you feel like if, you know, there's a knock on your door and there's an actual alien there that's, it's, that's, a, that's a lot to process. So I get it. Seamus is there. No questions tonight. Thank you. And the crew for another fun episode. Keep smiling. I appreciate that. Just no questions, just, just money and, and, Nice, thanks. I'm just looking through. I'm just looking through the chat. Multiverse is not would not be stressed out by the alien. He'd say, "Let's roll one up." Cool, cool. I don't know what they smoke in outer space, but it's probably pretty good. Andy, that's a funny comment. I can't read that. R.S. Uh, Bono, yeah, this. I don't wear these because they're cool because I I I don't think they're cool, <laughs> but they I can see because the lights are bright and these have magnification in them so I don't have to squint at the screen. Um, but they're not fancy glasses. These are like Amazon basics. Yeah, they smoke space weed. Says no, no, that's true. Roman stone aliens are pro coal, probably not. But I like where I like where your head's at. Kaylin, baby, like the episode. I appreciate it. Guns, water, no hecklefish. Hecklefish is here. He's here. He's um. He's looking for tips. Hecklefish looking for tips. A modern day goldfish lives in style, but you haven't tipped in quite a while. <laughs> I gotta pay for it, or I'll be living in a tent in Portland. You don't want to end up living in a tent in Portland. You know, nothing but love for you Portlanders that are here, but your city is di very different than when we were there last. Very, very different. Um, hey, look, there's Jen, there's Victoria, and there's Gina. How are you guys doing? Good. So uh, we talked about in, in the episode, I said, you know how they drink coffee, they drink coffee on Lanulos, right? And in the, in the show, I said, you know, it's weird that they drink coffee and that's some exotic beverage like Ractigino. 
Rack, did you know for, for non-Star Trek people, that's a Star Trek beverage? And someone in the chat said, did he just say Raptor Gino? <laughs> and I thought, I, <laughs> I thought I, I, I need that. I need a t-shirt or a mug with a, a, a Raptor's body and Gino's face that says Raptor Gino. And I don't know, maybe he's ripping the throat out of something. Well, he's mad because he can't get his joint to his mouth because it's. it's oh, that's his why. Yeah. But did the rap raptors had the they could they could smoke a J right they had the they had the claws oh, yeah the raptors have the long I was thinking a T Rex you think a T Rex uh, Gina you want to give us a little teaser on what Gina's story hour is uh, this week I see that well, you got your show prep in. well strangely uh, enough there you mentioned a few things that are in my story tonight one the little tiny arms uh, and two an alien knocking at your door so I'm just gonna. <laughs> Give that as my teaser. No pebbles. It's, the, it's not story time yet. It's not story. I just the beginning of that song makes me laugh, and seeing all the all the Gino heads pop up just makes me laugh. So when Gino's, I play that when Gino's being very Gino. You know, not all the time, but when he's when he's when he's extra, you, you gotta you gotta fire up his, his theme his theme song. What it. And what's going on with Jenny and Victoria? You guys are moving into a new studio? <sighs> we are. Um, Danny Stormborn was asking if we could get some more uh, feminine Wi-Fi shirts like the one I'm wearing. Danny, honestly, I just took I took my V-neck shirt and I just cut the neck out of it. So. <laughs> showing a lot of, the wife is showing a lot of flesh there. <laughs> it's fine. It's like 80s, like flash dance. Yeah. Um, but yes, we are moving into the new studio. It's coming along very, very nicely. I'm very excited. So, so Mike T with a great question. What is Victoria's theme song? <laughs> I guess no. we're going to have to work on that. Dabby DeBoop, don't be a Jonah Hill. Yeah, I followed that the Jonah Hill stuff on Twitter the other day. It was so funny to see both sides of that story. You guys see what happened with that? His... His ex released a bunch of tweets where he wasn't awesome in the, in the uh, tweets, but it's always two sides to every story. And it's interesting. Well, it's that those tweets get leaked, you know, once he is married and has a baby with someone else. Mm -hmm. There's Sus. been some further info that doesn't look good for Jonah. Yeah. Well, you got you got more info about Jonah. <clears throat> he 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 might have tried to force kiss uh, an underage girl at a party. Yeah, but how did how did he know she was underage? Hmm. She was and on Disney. she was on Disney. What was she, what was she wearing? Not Stop that it, it matters. I'm just I'm just oh. curious. Just paint the picture. Theater of the mind. It's hard to know that girl's an actress. This was like 15, 20 years ago at a Hollywood party. Everybody was drunk, including her. I don't know. Um, hard to know. Asking for a, a Bigfoot episode. I really don't want to do a Bigfoot episode. I don't like the Bigfoot stories. I don't like them. Maybe a Gino story hour can do a Bigfoot. I thought we, we decided no feet. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That, we did say feet. that. We did say that. The sign is going up in the studio. <laughs> oh, that's what they had a nightmare there, didn't they? They did. they did. Wasn't that Johnny Depp's first movie? Uh, close. If it wasn't his first one, I think it was his first one. I think Nick. I think Nicholas Cage got him that gig. Yeah, I looked up crazy on Wikipedia, and guess what? This was on it. And we also got on this. M <laughs> On towel. <laughs> I think the bathroom signs are the best. Yeah. So it's going to be very, very exciting. We'll do a tour. We'll do a virtual tour. We can't invite everybody. A virtual over. tour, yes. There's Ron Klotzer. Thank you for the five dollars. You five more dollars, and you get a private dance. He's saying I'm back. I missed you. Did you miss me? 
Yes. I've been okay, Ron, but I know Victoria missed you. We, she was talking about you just yesterday. There's Seamus. We got you. Good to see Seamus. There's uh, Carolyn Smith's Food Forest and Homestead. I enjoyed the story. Peace, love, and happiness, y'all. What's going on in her avatar there? Is that a baby in a, in a, in a cage? It's bananas a on a fence. What'd I say? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Wallace, recent U.S. Air Force footage of Russian jets buzzing U.S. drones gave us sharp, clear color video. So why is all the UAP footage we see just fuzzy black and white crap? I, I, I don't understand why an iPhone can shoot 4K 120 frames a second, but on the ISS, they have like an like an old like a webcam from the 90s on there that does 10 mm -hmm. frames a second or whatever. Put just I will donate my iPhone because I don't I don't never know where it is anyway. You never answer your phone. <clears throat> I, yeah. well, I don't I usually don't know where it is, so they could just have it because it. You know, we've talked about some of this before, but if they would just put a streaming cam on the ISS and on the moon and places like that, the streams itself would pay billions of dollars. So there's no reason they couldn't fund it just through views. Right. If they if they charge like ten dollars a year or something. Or you get ten million people. I would I would buy it. Or just monetize it through Google or, and people will watch. They're gonna watch. They're going to leave it on all night long. I, I mean, I would leave it on just to catch anything. And would you pay for one or watch a monetized stream from the moon? Of course. Uh, give right. me a 4K stream. That's worth every bit, bit of 10 bucks. Well, it would yeah. be fascinating because it's yeah. something you would never be able to see most people in, you know, in real life. It's a, yeah. It would be amazing. Now, John Hobart saying that they do have streaming cams. John, can you link us in the chat to the ISS or to the moon. I don't know. I don't know. Jo you know how John Hobart is. He just gives you a little bit and yeah. he, he makes you want more. You know how I, he is. I think he means to the ISS, but Tom foolery with those cameras, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, whether or not we're, we're being faked images, seeing faked images. Right. By the way, that's so that's where the chat is tonight up there. There's going to be technical difficulties. I prepared for them as best as I can be to minimize the downtime. I can't wait to move into the new studios where I can breathe. <laughs> just, I'm just full of snot, constantly full of snot. You think this passes for a live stream? Think again. All right, so we don't, we're not going to know what Geno you know, Story Hour is until Story Hour, right? Uh, I think uh, we decided we're going to start keeping a secret from you. So um, I guess that means secret from everybody else. But I see well, the show. Fun. I mean, I gave some hints. <coughs> we'll see who can figure um, it out. Stand by one second. Okay, Jason Morales, Skimwalker Ranch, real or a bunch of BS? Um, BS one of the reasons I've avoided doing that one because it's a TV show. Uh, so there's so much. Jen doesn't think it's BS. She thinks there's something to it. Well, we have an episode on it coming up. So. Oh. <laughs> so I guess we'll cover it then. Well, it's so funny because there's, you know, there's several stories where you're like, I'm not doing this. It's BS. And then you do it and you're like, I, I kind of believe this now. Monster 1026 asking, <clears throat> what about an episode about Enki and Enlil? That's uh, Anunnaki. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> no, 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 that's a cough. So, because <clears throat> I don't have the nicotine gum because it's too noisy on the mic. So I have the lozenges <clears throat> and now, and it's worse. They're making me choke now. Oh. You should just chew the gum. I better get a beverage. So he's getting a beverage. So let's see. Um, but again, I, I did give some some hints. So we'll see who can pick pick out from my hints. How many aliens are knocking on on doors? Uh, actually, I don't know if it's an alien, but uh, uh, tonight it's knocking on 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 doors. How do they know? Like, is it a custom in in on their planet, if people live in houses, which we're just assuming that they do, they, we don't know that they do. 
but they also knock on doors to announce themselves like did he study us to know that that's what we they, we do here it's all very strange quick just a quick interjection uh enki and Aaliyah, that's anunnaki monster and yes we're going to do an episode on that sorry so did, did i interrupt um, we were just gina we had made a comment and then i had commented on his comment all right very good black eyed kids black eyed children a lot of requests for that not a huge fan of it because there's not a lot it's just telling a story with not a lot of visuals but i guess we did that tonight just tell black eyed children stories for an episode is that an idea yeah i mean you know we, uh, it, it's like we talked today about like the Antikythera mechanism and there's not like a whole episode to do on that one. So you'd have to do several stories about like Uparts and Uparts. And yes. and if we do the story, we're not going to get any super chats from demonic hordes anymore. Right. He's good <laughs> for five bucks a week. Um, Keeney Ray, uh, my dad Ray, hey dad Ray, wants to know what you guys think about Shroud of Turin. Uh, Shroud of Turin's debunked. But I love I the story. <laughs> you think the cats missed me from when I've been to the studio all day? <laughs> Cat, where are you? So Shroud of Turin, I'm, I'm assuming that everybody knows. If you don't, because I, I see loving the gamers here, he doesn't know what it is. Circle Herc does not know what the Shroud of Tur Turin is. Jason Puck doesn't know. So that's the that's the cloth that Jesus was wrapped in um, when he was taken off the cross and placed into the cave. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, Paul says Shroud of Turin is real. So there's an impression of Jesus' face and, and, and his torso on the cloth. So it's, it's, it's fascinating. Let me see if I can. Yeah, there we go. It is fascinating. All right, let's do Shroud of Turin. Yeah, so this is now this this image is enhanced. But that's that's kind of what it is. Um there we go. So we've got believers of the Shroud of Turin in there. That's that's awesome. I love the story, but it's been, um, you know, it's been, they've carbon, they've carbon dated the, the cloth to, I think it was about a thousand AD. And they detected uh, charcoal on it from burning. They think that it was in a building that had a big fire. So, uh, so I think that's debunked. Uh, I want to be wrong though. That's one of those that I want to believe in. You know, maybe it would be a, a fun episode to do. I don't think the tor shroud is enough, but a fun episode to do of just about some religious, you know, I like the religious ones. And they seem to do pretty well. This is going to be a whole thing tonight. <laughs> no, I'm just reading the chat. James J said it was repaired. Someone, can you do shadow people? We have an episode on shadow people up there. I even told my own shadow person story, which is terrifying. Trenton saying, Ma, me loaf. <laughs> All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run a couple of these videos and we're going to get into some of our stuff. I'll let you guys go. Okay. All right, there they go. Oh, pardon me. Lee Miller, um, please do Roanoke. Debunked or not, it's a good story. I agree. And at least it <clears throat> it's at least based on something more than this episode, at least. Yeah. I mean, the Roanoke's a fun story. That's that's debunked. But it's a fun story. If you don't know, that's where it was a a colony in, you know, before the founding of the nation, we're talking 17th century, that everybody just vanished. And there were weird carvings on the tree just outside the, the village. I'm trying not to give spoilers about it. Elon Musk is a clone. Rob Collins is from Roanoke. Geoja Hunt, what happened in Vegas? I, 
Someone in the uh, Patreon chat was saying that there was another Vegas UFO thing today, but I can't find it. If you can find it, let me know in the chat and we'll, and we'll talk about it. Trenton saying Jen is a, a, a Pleiadian. Is that what you think she's from the, the Pleiades constellation? Could be. I mean, she's from Kansas City. Uh, place is like another planet. She's shaking her head. Kansas City is very nice. Hey, look, the best White Castle I ever had was in, in Kansas City. All right, take a look at this. Oh, level crew here. Take a look at this. Um, <clears throat> make sure the sound is on. It's a slow start. He's not a screenwriter. You know, you get in late, you leave early. But we'll let him set it All up. All right. So let's meet Tim. Do tree work. Always cutting down trees. Past 15 years. Was asked if we could paint this house. And I thought, sure. Let's get to it. So anyway, we go to... And guys we're down here taking breaks we're downtown flint downtown so check this out that tree is clearly 300 years old two probably 200 super old tree but look at what we found inside look at this what is this you see that and there's carvings on it so he mentions in a minute that Flint, Michigan was founded in something like 1807. He'll say it in a second. So whatever this thing is, was in the tree with carvings. I mean, it, it's clearly not an accident. Is this? I got some markings on it, but I don't know. See that it's, you know, it's got levels on it. But I don't. Right. One, two, three, four. And who knows how deep it goes? Frankie, daddy, oh, oh, oh. No. We've got to keep an eye on his channel. To that see. ain't natural. Someone in the in his comments says, it's a flint stone. <laughs> oh, 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 my spleen. Oh, you're going to rupture my spleen. Jenny likes, she likes, she likes a pun. Anybody got any thoughts? Let us know. Leave some comments. Very curious, and we're very interested. Okay, so what is that? What is that with carvings on it? Wonder Jan says that's the portal to the upside down. McDuff says it's a gravestone. I mean, it could be a gravestone, but it's inside the it's inside a a, a tree that's been there for a, a couple hundred years, and it's you know, this is this guy is not a wacky channel he cuts you know he cuts down trees he's just a guy he's not trying to get clicks but of course you got to keep going right you got to get that tree out of there you got to dig right frankie you got follow-ups all right we got some follow-ups hang on you see well his whole channel is is just this stuff all right here we go, right, here we, go. we got these letterings now you can clearly see them so I don't know what that means. But this thing's pretty big. It does go down more. A couple of other layers. It goes down to about, geez, it goes down pretty far. Jay Canuck Viking headstone? That'd be cool. There's a little bit of a part two. But it's all broken up on the backside right there. Lord Alchemist. All right, here we go. We drill. got these letterings. I agree. Is this? Is this? We got some more. Let's see. So it's definitely a property line marker, yep. but it's a monument. Yep. It's, it's just rocks it's, that are stacked on top. Hold on. Let's, let's build them up to the store. Whatever. But it definitely goes under here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they buried it in the ground. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But it used to stick up straight. Okay. I can't hear what he's saying. I think they said it's a monument of some kind. Still, we can take down the tree then. Well, we can see that. Of what kind? They do. They want to take down. Uh, I could hear it. So he was saying that it's like a property marker, and they used to put them at the corners of properties, and they they planted the tree next to it, 
and the tree grew up around the stone. So those markings are, so you're telling me those markings are not aliens or Vikings. That's what that guy said. <clears throat> I don't trust him. I don't trust him either. I, I think they probably alien Vikings. He reminds me of the guy like in um, Holy Grail, <laughs> historian that just shows up out of the blue <laughs> when there's fighting going on in the background. In his little suit, he's very cute. You guys want to see another weird one? Um, yes. All right. The big question is, what is this strange and bizarre creature? What the fuck? That's creepy, but it, he is does have a backpack. I don't know if there's like a goblin LL Bean. CGI, but that's cool. Oh, you don't you don't believe that one? No. Yeah, Gollum. Chad thinks it's Gollum. But he's cute. Cute. Avatar guy, this channel is becoming the new slapped ham. I don't think that's is that a compliment? I don't know that channel that well, but it doesn't feel like a compliment. <laughs> now I can look it up. I've heard of the channel, but I don't think that's a compliment. Catman, yeah, of course it's CGI because there's no, there are, there are no goblins. I just, I mean, but it was well done. Jane thinks it's Dobby. Tamara thinks it's Dobby. But what does it have in its backpack is what I'd like to know. I guess goblin snacks or something. <laughs> Lemon bread. <laughs> John Hobart says that it looks like his ex-girlfriend's soul. <laughs> now, did you guys see, did you guys see the um on the ring camera? Did you see this guy get abducted by the get beamed onto the alien ship? Uh -uh. It's the doorbell camera video that's raising a lot of questions today. A man walks out of a house, and in an instant, it looks like he's being <laughs> out of the Now the guy in the video is coming to Inside Edition to tell us what's really going on. Are you witnessing an alien abduction? A homeowner in Houston walks out his front door, then with a flash of light, vanishes. It appears he's beamed up to outer space. Look again. So, did the man really go missing? Were you abducted? <laughs> I made sure that, you know, I, I got back from home for dinner. <laughs> he looks all right. He's not, I, not I, squirming in the seat from the pro. I can't talk about it right now, so. Uh... <laughs> all joking aside, Larry Lewis explains what's really behind this eerie video. I think uh, it got caught up in the recording, and forever in the loop got stuck. So, it stopped recording, and you had walked out of frame, and it looked like you disappeared. Right, right. I don't think so. I mean, I don't, this guy, he, and this guy's not hoaxing, but it didn't stop recording. It's still playing. And he, he's gone and he, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. The loop got stuck. So it stopped recording. Doorbell camera video that's raising a lot of questions today. A man out of a house and in an instant, it looks like he's beamed up to space now the guy in the video is gino you saw this one i did i, I mean look uh he might not even know he lost time he might not not even realize he thinks he just just uh walked in and out of frame you know you know unless we do some kind of um i mean so many uh abductee stories have to come out during hypnosis so um of course I, i'm not saying this guy he definitely did get abducted or anyone did but uh, I'd be I'd be interested to see what happens under hypnosis. What he feels happened that that uh, you know that day. Chris Phantom, the shapeshifter. Yeah, something's going on there. Um, Bumberhead saying he's got mad hops. True. <laughs> Cabal's not buying it. Well, that's the thing. He's not telling a story. He's not trying to hoax us. He thinks there's something wrong with the camera, but he's there. 
then with a flash of lights, I, I don't and know. Years, and the frames per second we're getting, it, it doesn't it seem like like the camera stopped. No. <laughs> you know, it sometimes a bug will fly in front of a ring camera at night, and it could look. It could look weird. It could look like a UFO. It could look like a ghost. So if I, I would be inclined to say, oh, it's just a bug or something like that. But it appears at the same time he does and right where he's standing and he disappears. I just, we don't have enough frames to see if he actually morphs. And YouTube won't let me do it. Try that, YouTube. Uh, well, yeah, because where does he go? It's not like he wasn't close enough to the to the bush right there to have like gotten around the corner. So here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna download it. I'm gonna download it. And we'll, oh, it won't let me download it. Look at it frame by frame. Hmm. It's blocked. Because I feel like he turns into the shape. Just can't get the frame there. Somebody was saying control. What? Where is it? Control plus uh, greater than. I think it's the greater than sign. That'll give us one frame. Or frame by frame. Control Pulse greater the, than. Control mm -hmm. plus. Swapping oh. frames. Thanks, Lucas. Well, Lucas, that's not working. Oh, well, then no thanks, Lucas. <laughs> At speed, yeah, Father Ryan. It, you, uh, but how do you do the frames? They, they're Maybe. saying now they're saying no control. Just do. Just do greater dot than less or, than. Right. So dot or comma. Yeah. Nothing. Nada. Oh wait, there we go. Oh. There we go. We got it. Nice job, chat. Hail, all hail, chat. <gasps> See it? See, I, That's yeah. him. That's not a glitch. That's him. Right? It looks What's like that? it to me. Five o'clock shadow saying, dude, dude, well, what is this? Purposeful Porpoise says that's a fly. I would be inclined to agree with that most of the time, but look, he's there. He's wearing like light clothes, right? Light, light shirt. He disappears. He becomes this blob. And then when it focuses a little more, it looks like he's, it looks like dark pants and a light shirt in the, in the blur, doesn't it? Yeah. It looks like he's taken off. I'm waiting for Gino to say, here's what happened, but he's even Gino looks baffled. I, I, I look, I, I liked it. I, I, I feel like um, he's just been told he has to say he wasn't abducted or maybe I don't know. Guys, like I said. Yeah. I don't, I don't think he's lying. I just think he doesn't. Lost time. He's got missing time. That's so missing the time. The thing is though, is that how did, so how did inside edition get, this ring camera footage like this guy's acting like somebody got a hold of the footage and he's like oh yeah it was super funny but that's you know it wasn't anything how did inside edition get it he had to have sent it to them it's his ring camera footage right he sent it around and goes viral right so he sent it around to go viral so when they interview him he can go ah eh, no it was just it's weird so yeah, Butch, I think it, look, it looks like him. Ralph says he's a Power Ranger, clearly. <laughs> Danny, Danny Stormborn, 
Great question, Jen. Thank you. Uh, AJ, this video is ranking one out of 10. What? Oh, I didn't oh, turn on monetization. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and I had it sitting there. <laughs> sitting there and I forgot because my computer crashed during the chat. During the Patreon chat for Patreon members only, twice a week. There's not that many of us in there. Everyone puts their cameras on for as little as three dollars a month. You get those perks and you can support the channel. Uh, another great way to uh, support the channel is you could buy merch. And we've got um, oh the stick stickers are up now. Okay, that's nice. I want to know, do we have it? Do we have a time yet? What? The Fistable Mugs premiered today. Yay! Oh, we have Fistable Mugs today? Mm -hmm. is, that, is that under home goods? Is that what that is? Probably. <laughs> and then oh. you have to select your size. Okay. So so you can get like baby fist or, or human or adult fist. You could choose your fist. Yes, I guess. So, do we, so when do the... Um, do we have an update when when the when the plushies ship out? Mid it's saying mid August. Lizard people, lizard people. The teeth, so creepy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, would you kindly fetch my tinfoil hat? He comes with a tinfoil hat, a removable tinfoil hat. I love him so. So uh, jump on those. That's uh, shopthewildfiles.com. So now that the fistable mugs are in, we don't have to send people to secret shop at the anymore. We don't. No. All right. You can still go there if you want to. I'm not going to take it down. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Before we get into um, the story, I'm just before we get into the Turkish UFO, and I let you guys go. Do you want to get? You want to do a giveaway and get this out of the way? Let's do it. Coming up on coming up on the one hour mark. What are we doing for word? La how about lanulos? That's hard to spell, right? Yeah. All right. If you're new here, first time here, here's what happens. We do this once or twice a show. I try to avoid twice if I can, but sometimes Jen doesn't let me. What you do is you type the word that you see on the screen into the chat, just this word, the way it's spelled, the way you see it, and you're entered to win. What do they win? They win an opportunity to go and help Victoria unpack in her new house. <laughs> Victoria's like, yes, yes, that's what they win. Uh, no, they win a hacklefish plushie. Okay. A special kind, because normally we give away a $50 gift card, and those the hacklefish plushies are the 30 bucks. We give okay. them like an extra tw <clears throat> What? They win a hacklefish plushie. All right. Hacklefish plushie. So they have lanulose. Just the way you see it, Marion Lanulos is easy. I don't think that'll work, but we'll see. Um, John Stamos will not work. <laughs> Larry Lewis will not work. Lanulos, no E. Leno, that's not going to do it. <clears throat> the plushie is a thirty dollar cost thirty dollars, but it's a fifty dollar value because it automatically appreciates as soon as you buy it. That's right. All right. Well, while we're waiting on that, we'll get a couple of super chats out of the way. Um, there's Paul. Uh, when the episode goes live, it erases the super chat you were writing. Anyway, glad tonight's episode wasn't too spooky because I'm watching on my phone in the middle of the woods. <laughs> and there's Fu Man. Thank you, human. Maybe now we can get some indoor plumbing for this bowl. Ugh, it smells like a dumpster full of used baby diapers in here. Fu Man says, a rubber chicken? You have upped your game, sir. That's worth another 20 shekels. I appreciate that. The rubber chicken was Jen's idea. She loves a rubber chicken. What's going on in his avatar? It looks like, is that, is that like a, it looks like a gay biker from the 70s, which is fine, by the way. That's fine. Uh I can't tell if those are leather chaps or not, but it looks like the bike because he, he's got no shirt on, right? He just has the leather suspenders and the biker hat. 
Yeah, it looks like they're doing cosplay of some sort. Mm -hmm. Well, of course they are. So that's what they call that. I don't know <laughs> if he superimposed his head over another picture. Sweet fancy Moses, I'm gonna be in a new tax bracket over here. Storm tax is a theft. Storm Chaser seven nine three plot twist. They didn't communicate telepathically. They're all just ventriloquists throwing their voice. Says Storm Chaser. Storm, you know how Storm Chaser always, always outside the box. J two J, thank you for the nine ninety nine. Do a flat Earth. We're going to do flat Earth, but we have to do it carefully because YouTube will call it disinformation, conspiracy, and we'll get a content warning, and we'll get a context warning and we don't want any of that stuff like for example while you're typing lanulose see that see this down here that's what you get when you do the if, when you do the weird stuff and you're and you're not algorithm focused a context warning youtube says that it doesn't affect um the views but it totally affects the views that's every time i get one of those the video tanks so flat earth will do it, but I have to be, I have to be careful. I have to try to, you got to try to sneak by the algorithm. There's Frank Herbert. I'm a huge fan of your novels. I love your show, but I'm pretty sure either you or Hecklefish are a CIA asset. Either or. Great show. You never know. The great Richard, Be Bre Bre the great Richard, the, the hybrid says, <laughs> Hi. They got me in collections and garnishing my wages too. Got guppy support payments, alimony up the wazoo. <laughs> they repoed my car. I'm living in a jar like a bum. <laughs> jar. I know that you got money, so why the hell don't you give me some? Mm -hmm. Tip the fish today. Please tip the fish today. All right, there he goes. I, I mean, I had to add some... Top Gun in there because the song goes on for a while. Uh, and big shout out to to Zeb the super fan for getting that uh, getting that one started. There is Mike D for twenty oh one. Two questions. So upping my contribution regarding Lou Alzando, would you speculate what he's trying to accomplish with the writer's strike? Could you sell existing Wi Files episodes as is to networks in the need of content? Lou Elizondo, I yeah, I think he's disinfo. Because once you're Intel, you're always Intel. You don't retire from from Intel. Um, what is he trying to accomplish? I would. It's um. It's all speculation, Mike. But I think it's distraction. I think he's the the new Richard Doty. So where Richard Doty will tell you. So I think we all kind of agree, at least watching here, that there's there's UFOs and aliens. So that information is true. And even if it's not, let's assume it is. But we don't want the public looking at the true stuff, so let's tell them a story that will give them a little alien UFO stuff, but have them not focus so much on what we're doing here. Have them looking at a tick, the Tic Tac, and you know, let's leak uh, the Tic Tac video and look how it moves and it's crazy. Meanwhile, over here, we're you know we're working on Element One Thirty Five. We're building uh, a a anti gravatics, you know, all that stuff. That's what I think it could be. But I don't know. Regarding the writer strike, and by the way, SAG just well, I, I just got email from SAG just like an hour ago. As of as of midnight tonight, that's it. Strike begins. That sucks. Um, so sorry if you're in SAG out there. Sorry for the news. So could you sell existing Wi Files episodes as is the networks in need of content? I I suppose I could, but the the show's not really the format I don't think really is T V ready. Without some tweaking. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. It's live stream amateur hour again. That one hurts my feelings. So I, I guess I could sell it to them, but A, I don't think it works, and B, I wouldn't want to. 
I mean, I told you guys that Hulu reached out about something like that. But I don't want, then they got to work for Hulu, who wants to, and, which is for now, I guess, Disney. I ain't working for Disney. Nessa Rose for $5. Why don't you allow us to join YouTube subscription model? Um, I might turn that on, Nessa Rose. The only reason that it's not is because there's so many ways to support the channel. And I might as well list a few since you brought it up. Sub supporting a Patreon is probably the best way to do it because we keep most of that money. And, uh, and by the way, the Patreon money, it, I use a lot of that to bonus the staff starting in, in a month or so. So that, that <laughs> there's. There she is. Very excited. So that that helps uh, helps keep things going for as little as three bucks a month, and you get perks like very intimate live streams. I mean, I don't wear a shirt, so they're extremely intimate. So you can do those. Those are twice a week, and uh, you get to see the episodes early without commercials. So it's for as little as three bucks a month. Um, buying stuff for the Wi-Fi store helps support the channel, and super chats are great. So we've got all those things, all those ways. Turning on subscriptions on YouTube just felt like, well, if you're already a member on Patreon, why would you, why do both? So, so like Nesseros, if you wanted to be a Patreon member for five dollars a month, let's say, or be a member, do it on Patreon because the Patreon takes like five percent or ten percent or something like that of the members on YouTube. They take half of it. They take like forty or fifty percent of the money for themselves. So, when when channels get a little bit bigger you get from YouTube what's called a partner manager. And this is something that small YouTubers dream of. I remember I dreamed of it. It's a person that you can that you have calls and meetings with and a personal email that you can talk to about your channel. And if something happens, you get demonetized or someone that you can talk to that can tell you that they can't help you at all. You know, it's someone that you can reach out to. But uh, so I've had a couple of different partner managers over the past year, year and a half. All they want to talk to me about, all they wanted to talk to me about is, uh, how I can get more super chats on the live streams, which I, it, it, we're fine. And I got to turn on memberships. You got, you've got to turn them on, got to turn them on. And if you tell them, well, I already do memberships with Patreon. Well, they got to go to a different platform and they got a credit card with YouTube. They could just click the button right there. Yeah, but you take half the money. Langostino will not work. That's funny. <laughs> Isn't that the Italian word for lobster? Lanulus, lanulus. So that's why Niceros. I still might turn it on because you can, because when you're a member, the coolest thing to me is you can have like custom emojis and icons that only members can do on the channel. And I think it might be fun to have, you know, hecklefish and crab cat emojis that you can use. But, um, but I don't know. We'll see. Oh, Shona fan for $10. Dan Yahtzee. Thanks for supporting the channel, human. Another great episode. The debunking part brought up a lot of great points. Hecklefish is right. Everyone with te telepathy is a bad idea. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, we need to have a firewall between our thoughts and other people. And there is... Oh. Name pronounced AU. All right, AU, love the show. When are we going to get some paranormal stories? Uh, do we have paranormal? Do we have like, we have some ghost stuff coming up, don't we? Well, we have the, uh -huh. the technology and the science behind ghost hunting. So we'll be doing that. Um, I have a couple of ghost story ideas that I want to throw into the bucket, into the hopper. So AU, we've got some of those coming up. Thanks for supporting the channel. Appreciate it. There's Dirthead wearing his Hecklefish shirt and his avatar. Great episode. No way a peaceful society exists with naked women everywhere. I mean, not a lanulus where they're all in good shape. But uh, move it along. <laughs> move it along. I was watching the chat to see if the uh, the they can't back into a parking space joke landed. It looked like it did. Did Did you hear that joke, Jenny? Did you see it? I did. Are you sim are you using a simulation right now or did you see Brian's comment? Yeah. In the super chats. At the very top. Simulation. Simulation. Brian, uh, something I learned tonight is that neither Jen nor Victoria can back a vehicle into a parking spot. How about that? Now look, I've known Jen for a, for at least a couple of years. 
Now, I don't know if she could back into a party. I don't even know if she can do it. I know she won't do it. And, and if I do it, it annoys her. I so, hate it. So I don't know if she can. Um, Victoria, can you back into a parking space? With a backup camera, I can do anything. Yeah. All right, there you go. With the backup camera, she can do anything. But it, including the parking space. Stop it. David Villef for $20. Stoked for the Turkish UFO. Yeah, that's coming up. I saw a video ab uh, about it by Chris Leto, uh, F-16 fighter pilot, and just from a picture slash video where the cameraman was standing, uses his pilot training to tell how big a, a craft is and how fast it's going. Yeah, I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of stuff for you on it. I've got a lot of links to go through. Not that guy. We covered him. I found one one place had all the footage. I'm just, I'm, I'm just oh yeah, here's Doc. That's Doctor Lear. Did you did you see that? Let me see if I can get it paused in the right spot. Are you going to do the drawing? <laughs> yeah, this is a pre sell. I was I was trying I'm wait, I'm trying to get it to 1500 like last oh. week. Um, Alien face. Alien face. Uh, yeah, so so we're going to get into that in just a little bit. Okay, 1500 1500 <laughs> Uh There's super fan Zeb Francis. Thank you for the $5. Hey, yo, making it rain over here. Interesting one tonight. Is it me? Was Hecklefish wearing lip gloss? Mouth. Is it true Hecklefish was a stunt double in Finding Nemo? I'm bummed he didn't swear tonight. Yeah, he didn't. I guess he didn't swear. I thought he had some good stuff tonight. Uh, lip gloss. I think. I think it was more like lip balm because he was. Yeah, he gets he, tapped fish. It's lips dry sometimes. in here. Yeah, it gets dry in the warehouse here in Vegas. So he was wearing some lip balm. All right, lanulosis are in. We're ready to do this. Uh -huh. And so someone is very close to helping Victoria unpack. Let's find out who it is. There's Nathan Bloody, there's Max, John Sire, Nick F, Couch, Kirk, Leslie, Jose, Jeff, and Bizwit, Galia, Matthew Brown, Marion, Paul Thornley is the winner. Yay! I wish that there was a sound effect or something because it's very exciting. Right? With the well, confetti. Whip one of those up. I whip one of those up. All right. So, what does Paul Thornley have to do? Do you want to put your phone number in the chat? Come to Discord. I'll give you my address. <laughs> no. uh, come to Discord, put in a help desk ticket, and we'll get with you and get your prize to you. Yay. Yay. That's a lot of fun. Okay, I'm going to... Uh... I'm going to take 30 seconds, 40 seconds to get a couple of these links set up. Do you want to read a, a couple of super chats in the meanwhile? Sure. Oh, he's gone. He went fast. All right. The old man for $5 says, we hillbillies love our supernatural yarns, and they can be a lot of fun if you don't think it through. Never believe a sales weasel, LOL. Well, I like that. His avatar says the big fat morning show. Well, thank you, the old man. Uh, Michael Stopar for $5 Canadian. What a great birthday. My son ordered me a plush and a mug and a new episode to end the night. Great work, AJ. That's awesome, Michael. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Cancer Moonchild. Uh, <laughs> Darcy Stone for $5. Hello, AJ, Jen, Victoria, Gino, and Hecklefish. Love you guys. I enjoyed the video, but I must admit my faves are about the moon. Is it or isn't it hollow? Um, Ooh. Question. That's a very good question. We have I think some... what we need to figure out now, not is it, it is hollow. We have to figure out is, uh, did something place it there? Right. Hmm. Hmm. We do possibly have another moon video coming up very soon. Woo! 
Hello, Ikeleys. Thank you for the twenty dollars. Fantastic as ever. Roll call, Ikeleys here, yo. <laughs> Roll call. Always enjoyed the cold story, true or not. It has a Star Trek feel to it with the unity. L L A P. I don't know what that means. Be safe, be kind. We'll be safe, be kind to you too. Thank you very much. And then Glia for $50, $50. Stuff it in my fishbowl if you want conspiracy. We'll do anything you want, but you got to do something for me. We are the channel that can find whatever you may seek. But we need some money, human. We don't do for free. In the fishbowl, put Shannon in the fishbowl. What if I said, please, please. <laughs> human thanks for all the cheese <laughs> i love it i guess llap means live long and prosper that was just me not having my nerd brain on and uh she pronounces it gallia gallia hi gina victoria jen aj good ep getting better and better i'm happy waiting for this every thursday but tonight i'll dream about the joker smile lol <laughs> creepy does the thumb go out or in uh glee i'm sorry that she she's taking away this this was this was glia's time i'm sorry glia tempio, tempio di glia i'm sorry galia lo siento galia there's lamar for ten dollars uh thank you human i'm getting killed on alimony and guppy support payments over here Heckelvish hosted show with co-host AJ about the crab cat mythology. That could be good. Hi. I was very excited because I just got uh, pictures and they're finished with the carpet in the studio. So, so they finished the carpet. Uh -huh. Wow. That's very exciting. That's a day early. Yeah, they weren't even supposed to start till tomorrow. So tomorrow you get to go into your studio with brand new carpet. It's all painted. And what, they're working on your kitchen? Yep. Yay! There's G Rim for five pounds. Found you guys in August last year. Now you're a daily routine. Daily routine. Fear the crab cat. Fear. Fear the crab cat. Appreciate that. G Rim. Grim. G Rim. All right, I'm going to play a couple of, uh, of videos and stuff. I'm going to let you guys go uh, squirt or whatever you need to do. There's Jen. There she goes. Here's Victoria. There's Gino. Peace out. Uh, we'll... Go through some of these. Uh... This is Kum... Kumburgaz. Kumbur... The Kumburgaz UFO. Uh, Monster 1026, have you done one on Gobekli Tepe? Not specifically, Monster, because uh, it's been covered a ton, but I've mentioned it quite a bit. Uh, two weeks ago, I did. And uh, don't forget Bankuklu Tarla, which is even older than uh, Gobekli. We covered that as well. Uh, Coconut Milk Premier Gen Studio on the Backstage Files. Yeah, maybe we could do that. We were going to do like a time-lapse but it's too much work and it, you'd rather just have the guys painting and working than moving cameras around. So, uh, but when it's finished, we'll, we'll definitely show you guys where it's getting there. We're almost there. Uh, Caesar V wants a stop action plushie war crab cat versus heckle. It's the biggest cage match since Elon versus uh, Zuck. All right. I, I've got a playlist of these videos here. I don't know if he has them in a specific order, um, if these are just the straight videos, they, they're going to be a little herky jerky, but I do have this one. Let's get this queued up. I do have this one, which is, has all the videos and they're stabilized so we can get a closer look at, at the craft. So, so a Kumbugars, that's a, that's a, a seaside town in Turkey where over the course of like two and a half years, this UFO kept showing up. It's been seen by multiple people multiple times, and it's one of the craziest UFO videos that uh, that you'll ever see. 
This object was filmed over the shoreline. Uh -huh. You can see it out yeah, there. Uh, you can hear the guy who's filming it. I don't speak Turkish, but you can what, whatever he's saying, I'm sure translates to "Oh my God." Now he can't believe it. And notice the date. This is May 27th, 2008. Now, there are some potential explanations for this that, um, that I'll get into. And you know that I'm a skeptical believer. I'm an open-minded skeptic. You know, I want to believe that these things are true, but I also want them to be true. So if there's any way to debunk anything, I want to know it because I want to know for sure that whatever that cool story is, is not real. It's just a story. This one has been difficult to debunk. So people do try. So this is a different day. This is a couple of weeks later. That's why it looks a little different. Hey, Nathan Gibson. Michael Asylum says, I want every false story debunked. I agree. Suzanne thinks that's swamp gas. Yeah, Sean, see the raindrops. That's... That's that's one of those things that people look for, that people say it could be fake, is that it's raindrops on the lens or rain, raindrops on glass. But I don't know. This these have been analyzed, and I've got an analysis that I'll that I'm going to go through with you. I just wanted to kind of set it up with the with the images first. This is now six nine June 9th. This is four days later. Hey, Wizard, I have hearing issues. Can you please turn CC on? I, the, I, there's nothing I can do about that. You have to turn on on YouTube on your side. We don't control that here. I can upload closed caption afterwards, but not live. And this is the following night. And this is the night after that. June 10th. So his location has been authenticated. You know, some people have said, "Oh, he's not on the beach." You can hear this. It, this is not. It's been authenticated. There's. Uh, that's one of the shots they actually used to authenticate it. The one you're seeing right there. Is people have gone to that spot and said, "No, this is. This is where he was." That's so bright. Pulsar Echo definitely looks like a solid object. For sure it does. Melissa Ellison, say hi to the Ellison family. Really appreciate it. Kaiser Swift, hard to fake in 2008. That's a good point. VFX is way different now. Paul Porter uh, wants to email me stuff. My email is aj at take a guess. Hitflix, I've seen this video. It looks eerily real. In the analysis of the footage, they look like grades. Yeah, I'm going to show you that in a little bit. There's, I mean, there's a lot of, there's 40 minutes of this. So we're not going to go through all of it because it's, kind of, it's repetitive. But I want you to see the stabilized footage because then we can get a better look at the lines and a better look at the pilots. 
Orada evet. belirli günleşiyor. Right, so you seen the dates is just a couple of days later. Evet abi gördüm ben onu. Gördün mü? Uh, Piger evet, 2 I wish this were stabilized. Pet check it her pet tripod. I have the stabilized footage Piger. We're going to get to it. Ben şu an zoom'dayım. Evet abi dedi gibi ya kayıp gidiyor ya. Scorp Wanna thinks it's Kaiser Soze. Spoilers. Hey dog, we need to realize we are not alone, so to speak. Abdul Al Hodel, I thought this was debunked already. If it was, link me. I've seen people offer attempts to debunk it, but I haven't seen hardcore proof. Because this is this is seen by by multiple people. Location C of Marmara, Turkey, Mini DV Canon, filmed by Murat. Uh -huh. Okay, so this particular shot, some people have said that that's just a reflection of moonlight in the lens. But hang on a second. Hang on a second. All right. That is a mini... DV Canon DM dash G R I A. So that's what that camera is. So could there be a reflection in that lens? Yeah, I guess there could. I guess there could. I wanted I wanted to tell the guy no, it can't be, but it it could. It's the it's the right shape lens. Let's see. 612. So one day later, two days later. Al gidiyor değil mi? Alkan. Nerede? Denize doğru gidiyor değil mi? Graham Greer, have you seen the attempts to match the profile of a cruise ship far out near the horizon? I have seen those. And I've seen it try to get matched up with a with a body of water like a lake. This, 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 this one's really herky jerky. I have the stabilized footage. We'll, we will get to it. All right. Following night, two nights later, Sarge's Customs, Lockheed Martin for the win, right? You know they have it. The slickness, it's triangular, it's ours. Yeah, the triangle crafts are the, the ones that are triangles. Like, I mean, that, that could be a triangle there. Like when you see the V formation, when you see the V formation, that's, that's ours. That's our craft. It's either, you know, you can believe that that's anti-gravity tech that the U.S. Air Force is working on, or it's those high-altitude super light balloons that, is that they're actually shaped like a V. But either way, it's probably Air Force. But this is, this doesn't look like a V to me. So this is four days later. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff going on on the beach. You know, so what's interesting about the lights in this is, you know, when we see the Vs, we usually see them at night, right? So it's just lights and black around them. So you can't see if it's attached to anything. Here, this is, it's pretty light out here, right? So if, if it were, if this were, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't we be seeing something behind here? Yes, it's okay. July 2nd. So look, I mean, you could see where these, whatever these are, these nodules, doesn't it look like the metal or where the skin of the craft is indented where these nodules were attached. But look, when I first saw this UFO, my first reaction was that's fake. There's no way that's real because it's too crazy.
July 4th. And it's not the same ship, right? They seem close, but they, it's different. This one has lights on the bottom. And the one where you see the pilots, and I'll admit it's hard to see the pilots, but the one where the, you see the pilots looks a little bit different. I know, I know. Spanky says, looks real to me. Yeah, it's crazy. Fred Red Beans, that doesn't look like a TR3B. The TR3B, that's the triangle craft he's talking about. No, it does not look like that. Bob Warfield, different angle. Golden Monkey thinks it's aliens. Alex asking, are we live or are we live? You tell me. Red Beer, the pilots are the best part. I agree. But, you know, I'm a broadcaster, so I'm not going to show it up front. I'm going to keep talking about it until we get there, and then you hang out and watch. Right? That's how we do it, right, Jenny? You pre-sell it, and you just, keep, you just keep hitting it. That's right. You just don't push it too hard that it gets annoying. You just, every once in a while, you go back and you sell, sell, sell until we get to it. Yes. Yes, she says. There she goes. Very agreeable tonight. All right, we've got some analysis on this that I want to go through and then uh, we can look at the stabilized footage. Um, for people that are into this case, the, uh, the document, everything that I pulled is all the, the common stuff. So if you know this story, you know everything I'm talking about tonight. I've, I, don't, I didn't bring anything new. The chat's up there, that's why. Uh, SARS, somebody put the pick of the pilots in AI and tell it to clear it up. That's, that's interesting. I don't know if anyone's done that. And, I, you know, honestly, I don't know if the AI is even good enough to do that because it's really blurry. And to be honest, if you didn't know, if you weren't looking for aliens, I'm not even sure you would see them. But once you start say, once you start thinking about grays and you look at it, then it, of course it's aliens. That's my Giorgio. That's my Giorgio impression. I'm actually going to work. I'm going to work on doing a Giorgio impression that that would be entertaining all right the summary of the case um who do we credit uh mario valdez santiago in chile this case developed in the location of the kumbagars between the years 2007 2008 2009 its main witness was a night guard named yalkin who while on duty registered video of strange objects that appeared at sunrise like floating or changing while in flight over the sea on the coast of mamara Yaman was able to film many video segments, some during the day, accompanied by witnesses with whom he spoke to while he was filming. And we, and we have one of those witnesses, which is uh, Dr. Lear, is an American guy who gives a bit of a lecture on it. So uh, I'll play that if you, if you guys want to hear it. Lot Makos, AI be like redacted. Yeah, it's, you know that's coming soon. Government going to get their hands on the algorithms. And not let us do that stuff. One singularity of this case was that the images were made with a camera that had an adapter for close-ups of 200 times optical, achieving a great amount of detail of the objects. I think it's 20 optical. But that's cool. Uh, at first, the videos were analyzed and made public by the Sirius UFO organization. I, that's, that's Dr. Greer's, right? I think that's Dr. Greer's. Directed uh, by the researcher Haktan Aktogan. This, uh, this case made big news in Turkey and in other countries as well. It also started a great debate between the official members of the Turkish scientific community, specifically the National Council for the Study of Science and Technology, also known as the, the, the T-U-B-I-T-A-K, of course. Got interested in analyzing the original footage with the intention of determining that the video was nothing more than a hoax, gambling on the idea of scale models, toys, or CGI. The original tape was handed to that group on live TV at their own headquarters. Once the analysis was concluded, they gave the official report from which we took the following fragment. This is, so this is from the analysis of the group trying to debunk it, National Council for the Study of Science. The objects observed on the images have a structure made of a specific material and are definitely not any kind of CGI animation or in any means a type of special effects used for simulation in a studio or for video effects. So the conclusion of this report is that the observations are not a model, Marquette, or a fraud. 
And the last part of the report, it's concluded that the objects observed have a physical structure and are made of materials that don't belong to any category of airplanes, helicopters, meteors, Venus, Mars, satellites, artificial lights, Chinese lanterns, etc., and that it mostly fits in the category of UFOs, unidentified flying objects, and of unknown origin. So that's that's a group the group trying to debunk it, and that was their statement. Wow. Other analysis was done by video specialist, image edition, and special effect companies from Japan, Russia, and Turkey, all ending up with the same conclusions. In Chile, I asked Professor, Professor Jose Atenas to technically examine the videos, an expert in graphics and video with more than 30 years of experience on television. In his appreciation, Jose also came to the same conclusions that the images are authentic. So far, nobody has been able to demonstrate that the recordings are a product of tricks or some kind of manipulation. Therefore, the debate has concentrated more over the nature and origin of the objects filmed by Yalkin Yalman. Let's take a look at some stabilized footage. Uh, I believe he has these in chronological order going back to the very first sighting. Uh, you seeing that? Yes. The original footage has been studied and verified as authentic by both state and private organizations in Turkey, Japan, Brazil, Chile, Russia, and the United States. There have been no official... This footage has been stabilized to clarify the objects. It has not been altered in any other way, and I think that's true. It's very dramatic. It's, the editing is very dramatic. I like it. 4 a.m., June 22nd, 2007. Yes, yeah, so this is the first one ever. Rob Collins thinks um, thinks it's bull. Thinks it could be a model or a toy. Yeah, look how shaky that was. Cat Dean thinks it's top secret U.S. airplanes. I don't think so, man. And I really don't think they would fly those over the coastline of Turkey. They fly those here in the desert. You know, I, I mean, American aircraft flying around Turkey, everyone's got eyes on that, including the Russians. They don't, they don't like our planes over there one bit. Almost started a war over that, remember? This guy did a nice job stabilizing. Big shout out to uh, someone's technique. This is a different day. Different day. Like, because in some of the shots, you can almost see the colors. That, that looks like the Enterprise. <laughs> that looks like the Enterprise. We, that, but it's, it's probably not the Enterprise. Brett says, do those occupants look like that EBA alien interview? Yes, they do. Yeah, that's pretty good. He's got decent focus there. Yeah, Chris Continuum thinks it's the cruise ship. I've seen that analysis. We could take a look at that if you want to. And it's close. Kobe says, nah, that's fake as hell. Okay, man. Sauce. Sauce it up. You know, I'm not trying to convince you. I just like looking at fun stuff. So sauce it up, drop it in the chat, and I'll and I'll and I'll go over it. Jen says, probably not the enterprise, but AJ leaves room for argument. Of course, gotta keep an open mind. Could be the enterprise. All right, August 24th. And now, and and to those that are saying that it's the cruise ship and all those other arguments, look at, you know, I I, I hear you because I've looked at those videos and they do make sense with some of the shots. But we have a lot of different angles. We've got different configurations of the vehicle, and we have different witnesses. So I believe that the one where you could see the aliens kind of looks like that.
Let's go back to the analysis for a little bit, some considerations. To be honest, at the beginning, my idea was to analyze the videos, hoping to find some elements in them that would be evidence of a possible fraud, taking into account the spectacular manner in which the case was labeled. Announced that for the very first time, a UFO was videotaped with its occupants precisely inside one of the objects. Not a minor issue for those of us who are obsessed with these themes. It was from skepticism, and why not say it with a quote of prejudgment? I decided to take some time to check out the fragments of the movie. You could say that my expectations were to find the string of the puppet. So I'm I'm the same way, you know. So I look at it. And it's like, all right, my gut reaction is that's fake, but it's awesome. So it's fake and awesome. So let's go and find out how they did it. You know, let's debunk it, and so we can say, and so we can move on with our lives. But all the theories to debunk it, some of them are pretty close. The reflection of the lens works with some of the shots. The reflection of the cruise ship in the distance causing like a mirage works with some of them, but not all of them. To make the analysis, I used electronics, electronic copies of the original videos given to me by the Turkish investigator who picked up the case first-handed. I met with I met with the investigator personally to comment on the about this incident. And I was very grateful to, of him handing me a copy of the original tape with which I could accomplish this work. The analysis will be exposed in a chronological and sequential way, in the same order that the research and results came. Finally, I present here. Finally, what I present here is only a portion of all that was extracted from the videos and from the image analysis. It's a lot of material, and when the moment comes, I will complete this publication with more findings. And we'll get back to that in just a moment. So where are we? We're still in August. Oh, now here we're now we're in now we're in the following summer. So this is the following summer, July, June 6th. Rottweller, can you do a video on the Antarctica? I've covered a little bit with Operation High Jump, but we do have some more to cover. John Pearson, not, the, not trusting the Turkish investigator. That's fair. But um but Americans and uh, we got to tr at least uh, trust uh, Japanese investigators. We don't have to trust American, Turkish, or Russian. Is this the one where that where we see the pilots? I think it is, and we'll we'll see some close ups later. Yeah, we'll see close ups later of the pilots. Yeah, this was that bright one. This is a this is a good one. All right, so remember this this location has been authenticated. Uh, the following night. I'll leave that on. I'll read some of this analysis. First appreciations related to the videos. There's always a first impression, and it even can be subjective, and by the way, preliminary. At first look, it called my attention to the honesty of the takes. That is, you can't observe any kind of tendency or intention of hiding something. It is clear that the film man does everything possible to configure his camera the be in the best way to capture the objects. He makes constant changes in light, in light entry and zoom, trying to show as clearly as possible what's happening while he films. He also worries on registering different reference points and at the same time making very powerful close-ups. Yeah, so we see, it, so that's why he's doing those, those kind of the zoom outs on the peers. He, he's, he's establishing, here's where I am. And then zooms in from there. After my first look at the image, uh, film grain, illumination, close-ups, and reference points, also audio, ambient sound, narration, and witness attitude, agrees totally with an authentic recording of objects at a great distance filmed at nighttime, the ones used in this work. There are also daytime recordings with interesting details, but, in the, anal but the analysis will only be the night ones. 
having these observations in account, plus the reports from the scientific committee and the opinion of Professor uh, Atenas, I'm willing to, to do and expose the following graphic analysis. Uh, his writing's a little clunky because I think there's just, this was translated from Spanish. Uh, the beginning of the analysis and the first obtained photograms. As I mentioned before, the objective of this review is to find elements that would reveal a fraud or a setup in the sequences of the video. For this, I realized an exhaustive observation of the images with a considerable close-up and frame-by-frame -frame process. The video segments used in this part correspond to the June 8th, 2008, and May 13th, 2009 dates, 1 and 2. I don't know if he gives us close-ups there. Given that, the most, given that the most spectacular aspects of the case rest, rest on the alleged presence of UFO occupants in the footage, the observation point was centered primarily in the center zone of the object. That's where, according to the witnesses, there was someone, what has been interpreted as the occupants or crew. In summary, the records of the case indicate that in the center of the object would be found some type of door or window that at times remains opened and from where it's possible to see two heads which would correspond to the slippery occupants. A short time after reviewing, I could observe a couple of photograms that caused me strangeness and amazement. My first reaction was to say, bingo, here is something. After a second view of the fragment, I was able to isolate a sequence that seems, to say the least, interesting. Not just because of the clarity of the takes, but also because the investigation started to turn more complex from the point of view of the different explanation theories possible. In fact, at this point, a series of questions appear that later I will comment on. In concrete, the sequence shows with the acceptable clarity the moment in which one of the figures, apparently a humanoid characteristics, raises then looks and remains for a fraction of time looking right at the front. The appearance is that of a head with two relatively big and dark eyes. Also, it's possible to interpret what part of the body of the figure is left to see. All right, so it's, I'm, go I'm gonna give you a closer look at it. I just wanna see if he has it. See if this will let me zoom. All right, so I don't know if you can see, but these this people are saying that these are two aliens in there, and you can see the guy on our right, his left, kind of looking around. There's that one frame where you can you could really see his eyes, like this. I don't know. Can you see that? So there's that look, and then there. Uh, other angles where we have this look. He asks, are there more than one? In this point of the analysis, it seems to me clear the questions about if there are two figures with these characteristics that appear in the videos. For this, I focus the analysis on the left zone. The idea is to find out if it's possible to find in that zone an image similar to the previously exposed. Does he say what date these are? Because I'll pull it up here. You know what, let me run this for you and I'll see if I can find it in this other tab. Found it. All right. All right, this is the video with um, some commentary from, from Dr. Lear who was there. Uh, I'll just play this in full, but I haven't really heard it yet. So if it's annoying, I apologize. In 2007, a night guard in Turkey captured some of the best UFO footage ever recorded. He certainly did. All right, so not stabilized. So this is June 22nd, 2007. I'm going to write that down. The documentation continued the following year when UFOs returned to the Sea of Marmara near Kumbagars. June 8th, 2008. <laughs> Reports of the UFO sightings spread all throughout the Turkish media. Kumbagar's UFOs, and then those are words. The UFOs returned once again in 2009, and Dr. Roger Lear was fortunate enough to be behind the camera. Here's Mike Barra. Turkey video was incredible. I knew Dr. Lear and he did not make it up, says Mike. And yet they concluded that every aspect of the footage was in fact genuine. This is not a hoax. Well, 
Don't tell us it's not a hoax. It's just... The following is an excerpt from Dr. Leo's presentation at the 2010 Ventura County UFO Festival in Ventura, California. It was a bright full moon. And below uh, the moon was this little bright spot. We didn't know what it was. And we were filming out uh, over the water. Uh, there was... Uh, What's with the Saul Goodman phone while he's doing his talk? Take that out. No uh, structures in the water. There was no uh, oil platforms. There was no uh, ships uh, going by. And uh, we uh, zoomed in. This camera had a 200-millimeter uh, lens and an electronic doubler. So we were able to get very tight on the uh, leading edge of the craft. The craft, you have to realize, is being lit by the moonlight, which is, as I said, a very bright moon. And then right in the front of the craft, there appeared to be three windows, viewing ports, whatever you want to call them. And standing in these viewing ports were typical bumper sticker, sticker gray aliens. And I, I saw this, you know, I mean, I looked through the camera myself, and unfortunately we recorded it. That uh, video uh, went to a university in Istanbul and went over extremely intense uh, scrutiny uh, by the Turkish government, and then um, the uh, video was also sent to, to the UK and several other, country, other countries for analysis. And by the time all that had been done and had already been on the internet and could absolutely not be suppressed from the public. Uh, recently, uh, this year, uh, the video was uh, given to a, uh, a uh, analyst in Chile. And uh, he did another review of the film, but this time, instead of concentrating on the craft... Does the dog know something's up? Another review oh, right, right. of the film, but this time, instead of... And uh, he did another review of the film, but this time. Dogs know there's aliens. Dogs know aliens. Instead of concentrating on the craft, he concentrated on the occupants. And on my website, Alien Scout. So the lights match up. He I guess they match up. Yeah, the, they match up pretty well. I'm just checking the chat to see if our custom cat says, no, nah, it's fake. Time after time, you would never once lay the camera on something to keep it steady. I don't think he could, custom cats, not from where he was on that, kind of on the beach. And, you know, he's using a kind of a big camera. Uh, he's using a big camera with a zoom. I mean, if you, if you, you kind of got to get the shot. You can't put it like on the on the rail and then what you look for a book or something because you got to aim it up. I mean, I know what you're saying. Like, dude, get a tripod. It's been going. It's been happening for years. Can you get a tripod? <laughs> but but I think uh, without a tripod, I I don't fault the guy for being shaky. Andrew Zach, what I miss? What's with the aliens and dogs? We're looking at the at this crazy UF these UFO videos, and I feel like the dogs know. The occupants. Dogs always and on my website, alienscalpel.com, you'll see the entire uh, Chilean uh, analysis. For more information, visit seriesufo.org. Here's that footage stabilized. The analysis he's talking about is what I was reading to you. It's June 12, 2008. So this is, yeah, that's one of the shots that I've seen a uh, debunker saying it's a reflection of the lens. And uh, I've seen the comparisons. Maybe I can call one up for you. And it's fair. It looks pretty close. But uh, in, in that one video, for just a few frames, we see that alien head move. You know, we, it looks like it's moving. 
So if it's a reflection of a lens or if it's a cruise ship in the distance, what's moving on those objects inside of it? The Chilean analysis uh, Dr. Lear is talking about here, you can appreciate the left side of the figure exposed before that we find another one of similar characteristics of equal proportion and in a position slightly inclined down. They are clearly visible, the form of the head and both dark eyes, absolutely symmetrical form. I agree. I agree. You know, when it's enhanced and it doesn't look like it's enhanced anything beyond just zooming. You know, maybe maybe there's some contrast enhanced here, but I don't think I don't think too much. But you can clearly see there's eyes. You can even see nose, mouth, and he's mentioning that the 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 proportions of the two beings, the heads are they're the same proportions. Something is moving in the first plane, as I indicated previously while analyzing the first sequence of stills. The following detail raised my attention: something moves in the first plane, almost in front of the figure in study. To try to solve this questioning, I return to check the complete video at different speeds and levels of close-ups, centering the observation only on the zone. On uh, figure 11, you can check the sequence of video and identify the zone to which I refer. Oh, pardon me. That's not professional. As far as live streams go, this one is, this one is terrible. Well, then after checking the videos at different configurations of reproduction, I've come to a strange enough and complex conclusion of explaining without showing simultaneously the fragments of video which is difficult to do for this way. Okay, nevertheless, I will try to do it by means of isolated. All right, what moves in front of the figures that we saw previously seems to be a third figure. This one is characteristics different from the previous ones. It's a figure with an insectoid aspect in its form and movements. It had to describe, I had described it classified somehow, I would say it looks very close to a praying mantis. It has a brown color. His head is not, his head is not so big as, as the previous ones and is of triangular form. It has two very big and dark eyes located to the sides of the head and in ascending form. It, seemed to have, it seems to have a long neck and a very thin body. On having checked carefully the videos, it is possible to distinguish his arms stretching in a similar way that, that the mantis does. His position on the scene is of, let me get these. This is what he's talking about. He's got little stick figure outlines of this mantis. I mean, that's you know, this kind of thing's a stretch for me. I, I think I would need to see it. I definitely see the the alien, the the grays. I I see that. But if you didn't know we were looking for aliens, would you would you see it off the top of your head? In these stills, I show the location of the figure in the top part. The low end interpretation is in drawing. Six twelve. This is that's the lights. Four days later. So there's his reference. And July second. I mean, this is a crazy one. Okay, so um, for the lens issue, this is what they're talking about, that uh, it's a reflection from the lens, and you can see these different ridges that are inside the lens and how it would make that shape. All right, Mike West, we, we got it. So, I, you know, it's close. But... Five o'clock shadow thinks it's government secret planes. I don't know. Do they have aliens? Lot Matko's photobombing mantis. Ah, ah. Oh, 
Uh, which is this one? That's what we've seen. Uh, my French isn't strong enough to get this for you. Asking if they see people in there. Uh, yeah, I think we see people in there. I got... I guess if I wasn't looking for aliens, this would still look like an alien to me. You know, up here, probably not. But man, that looks like an alien. Here we got some close-ups of different parts on the ship. But this this site that I'm on, he he's trying to debunk it. And look, is this what this is? Is it just a reflection of a lens? You know, in 35, 40 different shots at different times of day? You know, I don't know, man. Like, I almost want it to be. I almost want the explanation because then we can move on with our lives. But I, I don't think this is it. Here is the, uh, the cruise ship. Where some people think this is it's windows of a cruise ship. I don't know about that. There's his excellent beard. All right, let's go back to this one. Stabilized footage. All right, I found, I found that report from the scientific uh, group, Scientific and Technology Research Board of Turkey. I found the report. I'm not going to read it to you, but it's basically saying we, we can't figure it out. They're saying it's legit. Some conclusions up to this part of the analysis. As the slogan, uh, the title of this work, this one is graphical analysis. That is to say, it's based strictly on the images and tries to give clarity and respect to the information that the camera achieved to catch the videos. In this respect, I try to be rigorous, not do any. Like I said, this is translation from Spanish, so it's a little, it's a little clunky. All right, obviously, that in the course of the investigation, I find elements that could solve the case with some conventional explanation thing that up to the moment has not happened. Okay. I also have not found reports or investigations of organisms, not of particular investigators, who give conventional and convincing explanation in the matter. In the final conclusions, I will explain why I, I underline this, the graphical analysis, and my caution in doing affirmations on the origin of what appears in the videos. The July 4th, scrub a little forward there. Another light configuration, but those look like reflections. Carrie Winter, ah, brutal wife ran off with the investigator. Yeah, poor Woody, Mrs. Derenberger ran off. I think his name was uh, Bill Lalonde was the investigator. And what's crazy and so heartbreaking is uh, Woody Derenberger thanks him in his book. <laughs> As one of the investigators, he thanks him. I don't know. Maybe she was, uh, maybe he's, thank God, thanks for taking her off my hands. Oy, my revolt. She's driving me nuts. Thanks, Bill. I have an investigator coming over. He wants to meet you. He's very handsome. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to take you out for for dancing in a movie. It's fine. 
It's fine. All right, we've got a little more stabilized footage here. Let me catch up with a few super chats while that rolls. Unknown user for five dollars. Thank you for that. I'm a Wyvian. He's a Wyvian. She's a Wyvian. We are Wyvians. Wouldn't you like to be a Wyvian too? I like it. It sounds like five fives Wyvians. I was trying to make it fit with a Dr. Pepper song, but did it work? Uh There's John Hobart. Thank you for the nine ninety nine. Ooh, thank you, human. You made my dorsal fin tingle. Debunking these stories all the time is like me inflating my brand new blow up doll. And AJ runs in, pokes a hole in it, and runs out laughing with his middle fingers up. Love you, handsome bastard. Why are you laughing at? Because you could picture it? Yes. <laughs> and I can see you just backing out of the room. <laughs> I would never damage someone's blow up doll. <laughs> She's trying to eat. <laughs> oh, is that what she's doing? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> is Velvet Jones, thank you for 1999, an episode about missing YouTubers may be interesting. It's on my list, Velvet, to do that. I'm just worried about the algorithm. You know, I, I try not to do stories where there's a victim because there's some crazy missing youtuber stories um off the top of my head remember that remember that one maybe gino knows uh the girl who like would eat food on her in her youtube channel and and people think that she was like a slave i forget it's just uh, I, don't, I i i only know about that much of the story but the one that drives me crazy is the guy who went looking for the m-shaped cave and that's kenny beach Kenny Beach, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do that story. And Jen, if that's not on the list, make sure it is. Kenny Beach in the M Cave. I talked about. I told the story last week. Um, but yeah, Velvet. There's a few, like there's the the one I'm talking about. Uh, Zab girl. I'm trying to see if anyone in the chat remembers her. There's another, she would eat food. Yeah, she would eat food on her channel, and then there were some videos where, like, she was looking off screen, like it seemed like someone was making her do it, like she was a slave. Or and a good manager. Was hey, it? She ate a lot of food. Yes. Yeah, those are called those are mukbang videos. That's a big. That's a big Asian YouTuber thing. Taco Tuesday, Jenna Talwarts. I don't know if it was her. I uh, you know I don't know if I remember her name. I if think you said it. There's a, uh, is that Francis? No, that, it's it's that lonely girl. The one that they uh, just mentioned, I think, is was a uh, Asian singer uh, that disappeared. Yep, I'm I'm talking about someone else, but there are a few good ones. But what I was saying, Velvet, is when there's victims involved and stuff like you know she's a slave, she's abducted. It's not good for the algorithm. But those are stories that we could do on the What Files, which is going to be true crime. That would be a yeah, good. Velvet. That would be like be a, a good, good series of episodes. It'd be a good what files. Yeah. To put over there. And um, and I reached out to the uh, YouTube par partner manager who specializes in the big true crime channel. So hopefully we can get some help there to make sure that we can keep these videos coming. All right. There they go. There's Joe P, the official beard of the Y files. Another great episode tonight. Fascinating stuff. Funny note. YouTube live caption translated rack to Gino and into Raptor Gino. All right, oh, there he goes. Nice. Raptor Gino. Um, this needs to be a thing. Raptor Gino coffee or beer. When is Hecklefish's album going to drop? Yeah, I think we have to do a Raptor Gino shirt. There's Jesus. Good to see you. Hey, I'm going to send you an email with the subject titled Hidden Held by the Few. Look look for it. It is time to break the lid off all of this. All right, that's intriguing. Send it over, uh, Jesus, Jesus. 
There's Vincent. Thank you for the four ninety nine. Booyah! That's the stuff. Are the Patreon live streams able to be watched at a later time day for Patreon members? If not, could you make that a feature? Uh, no, you can't watch those later, primarily because other people are on there with us. So it's Patreon members come up on camera. So just for everybody's privacy, you know, we don't record those. We could, and you know, maybe we can figure that out at some point. But for now, since members show are up there on their camera, we don't we don't uh, save those. But you should still join, Vincent. There's Frank Herbert again. Thank you for the 1999. Never bothered with the live shows or chats before this. Hell, I never even donated to my own brother's Twitch. Well, too bad for him, man. I appreciate your support. Couldn't do this without you. Yeah, this is a this is a good one with the lights. It's a pretty good lens for 2009. Will Mac love tonight's episode? Request Elisa Lamb and the Cecil Hotel for the next episode. We're not going to do that. We'd have to do that on the what files for Elisa Lamb since she was a victim because she her body was found in that in the in the water tank. But it's a great story. It's one of my favorites, and I can debunk that. I, not debunk it, but I can explain what that how how she ended up in there because there's a whole other side of the story that the the true crime people don't cover. You know, there's a whole other side of that story. Wait. I didn't did, know now, that did you, you didn't know it's explainable. It's 100% explainable how she got in there. Yeah. Because there's there are other angles to the top of the hotel. I'm going to spoil it now for the 12,000 watching. There's other angles to the top of the hotel that are hard to find unless you're specifically looking for them. And once you have them, it ruins the magic mm. of the story. So the true crime YouTubers don't do that. But we do. Cool. So yeah, um, there's a there's there was that water tower right where her body was found in the water tower, and it's it, the story is how did she get up there? There's no way she can climb up there, but the the water tower was actually next to the roof of the building that was the same height, and the roof of that building there's stairs going down to the back door of the top of the hotel. She just walked up there, and just stepped oh. over, and slipped in. Are you kidding? I'm sorry. And then decomposed and the water turned brown in the Cecil Hotel. That's why they that's why they knew she was missing is the water tasted funny. Yeah. Corpse water. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And a corpse water. And it was Kate Yup that was the main the mukbang girl. And she still makes some takes it you know, three weeks ago. Oh and she she's not she hasn't been disappeared yet? No. She's still there. G Rim is back. A tip, tip, tip for the heat clip fish. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. John Mangino, 50 bucks. I get pretty freaky. He's a super <laughs> freak. Like kind of fish you dream about. You got freaky dreams. I get pretty kinky. He's a super freak. But only if you pay me. Gotta pay the fish. I need a tip. I need a tip. I need a tip from you. <laughs> and you. And you, human. You and you and you. Hit the, hit the, hit the, hit the stupid chat, stupid chat. Hit the button now. <laughs> like it. That's a good one. And Foolish Francis, thank you for the five dollars. Love the videos and watched every single one. But is it wrong to love After Files even more? Yes, that is wrong because uh, this is not a professional operation. Yikes! You call this a live stream? How are you not embarrassed? Uh, don't delete J Two J's comment yet because uh, I'm we're not gonna. gonna give, we're gonna give him rushes. Uh, Andrew Chill from one nine eight nineteen eighty two. Thank you for that. That happens to be the year of my birth. Holy mackerel! You see what I did there? Thanks for dropping a couple of shekels on me, human. <laughs> Playing. Did, did I just break wind? Or, or Jenny broke wind? No, that's not it's what okay. I was laughing just, about. It's okay. Just say excuse me and move on. Playing not, Rush always gets a tip. Great episode. Yeah, I mean, that Tom, that Tom Sawyer is my favorite, but uh, but Rush has a lot of good ones. Uh, laugh, laughs. That's I mean, I will always tip heck, heck of a for Rush songs. All right, so I, I guess Rush was a hit.
so what do you what do you think about the Turkish UFO? Legit? I think it's a craft of some sort. I think it's probably a secret test craft. Secret test craft? Craft of some sort. But and Gino, you've seen this one, right? Yeah, I, I mean, that's as legit as I think we we could get. Uh, you know, I mean, it's over multiple days. So you could say a smudge on the lens or water. How could it be over several days, the same smudge? That's just not how a camera would work, you know? I, now I just hear Morty screaming smudge on the lens. A smudge on the lens. Remember when the smudge on the lens with Morty? <laughs> Yeah. What was that? America, 1982. You are a baby, AJ. Was walking to the bus, passing Tool. Oh, you passed Maynard. Maynard's catching the bus. He loves some Tool Maynard. Uh, yeah, 1982, the year of my birth. Out! Wait, says Marcella. Wait, I was born in 82, and I don't believe you are you are as I 40, 41. Hmm. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? What's the matter with you? <sighs> Victoria's dog doesn't believe it either. J2J, nope. 50 bucks, says Rush Rocks. <laughs> Woo! Goldfish lives in style, but you have attempted quite a while. Neil Pert. My money is all spent. You haven't tipped a cent. I gotta pay my rent, or I'll be living in a tent. <laughs> Hey, tell me, did someone go on Grubhub and order crazy? I think your delivery is here. <laughs> uh, Wes Montgomery, thank you for the $10. Thinking about buying some caveman coffee. Do they have K-Cups? Great episode tonight. Love the channel. I think he's got K-Cups, right? I'm not sure, but you should go there and look. And if he doesn't, what you should do is get some Java 51 from cavemancoffeeco.com and use the promo code Y-Files. And you could put them in your K-Cups. Just... You know, use your old ones. It'll be just fine. You won't even notice. Yeah. For our machine, we've got one of those. It's like a little cup that you put the grounds in there. It's, and it's like, a, like, and goes in the K-cup holder. It's a reusable. So that's what I did with the with the, the 51, whatever it's called. Java What's it 51. Called? Java, Java 51. It was very, it was delicious. So was so good. now we have to make a, a Y-Files disposable K-cup. How much merch can can we put our name on? No, I don't think we don't need any more coffee products. Time, I don't, but I don't see it on here. Search just search it. it. Just search. Uh, if search. you gotta search for it, it you, it you wonder why. No, that's why nobody's buying it. We actually have had had a good amount of orders, but we uh, can use some more. So uh, please get them in there and. Uh, Thanks for that tip. There's Paul F. Paul F. Thank you for the ten dollars. No, I like the way you tip me. No diggities. Just tip me up. I'm a native West Virginian who has always loved the Indrid Cold story. You did a great job telling the whole story, and with the debunking, it's a great story, but it seems pretty unlikely. Yeah. the The big question really is: is what what happened? I mean, you, when you hear Woody's interview from TV, and there's no video of it, there's only the audio, but it's easy to find. You can tell that, first of all, he doesn't sound like he's lying, but second of all, he's not a, he's not a bright man. So, was he hallucinating something? You know, I don't know. But we're two hours, 15 minutes in, you know what that means. Might be time for Gino's story hour. 
Tell me something I don't know. Where Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Tell me something I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Jet set and betting at the regular scenes. Worldwide travel fiend with the green. Jack Harry is the bone who bears. Big boogers change smell. Fall in the sand. Hippity doppity doppity doo. Where's Gino? Yeah, that's who. And yeah, it's true. Cause that's a dude. He cares a fuck. He brings around and pops and thistles up. I'm just calling up our Gino story hour here. Yeah, we look at this. We got show prep. Um, are these in any kind of order? Uh, five images is what we're looking for. At 15, we're looking for five, but we're getting it. We, we, get, we got to dial it in. 10 minutes, five images. We just, we get it. Um, are these in any kind of order? No, um, but uh, really we just need the images, not, nothing that looks like articles or anything like that. And then there's one image for the ending that uh, is, uh, is uh, you'll, you'll see, uh, that, that second image, we don't need to use that till, till it comes up in the story. All right. So I'll, I'll wing it the best I can, but um, I'm just, I'm just going to need, before we get started, if you need me, I just need... All right. And so here it goes. Maybe a couple of super chats for a second. Okay. I will do a couple super chats for a second. When? Uh, let's see. Right now, Billy Asa for $10. Thank you. Seeing a frozen smile would be creepy, but the cold never bothered me anyway. <laughs> Much love to the whole White Falls team. Great show as always. Thank you, Julian. I like your uh, Captain America costume. Uh, Is that a King. Wonder Woman? That was a Wonder Woman costume. It was. That's not Wonder Woman. It's not. I. No, Wonder Woman has the bustier. What? That's not a plate. W on the chest. There, I, it's too small. I, I can't see. No, no. Uh, Dustin King for nine ninety nine. First live chat in a while. I miss these. Have you ever thought of doing a Phoenix Lights episode? I'd still also love a long form video on the MIB. So we think that's on our list. And is Dustin, he's holding up the belt. Is he the one that sent us the belts? I have to. I think I'm here, pretty sure. I'm pretty, pretty sure he is. Uh, and uh, of course, the simulation just uh, today, one of our. Um, one of our uh, super fans wrote was writing me that they actually uh, witnessed the Phoenix. Uh, themselves. Interesting. Yeah, I think we're doing some stuff on some lights. I just wanted Spook to read lights. this real quick. From mm -hmm. Melissa Taylor, $5 for Nugget and Bean. Thank you so much. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, that, that's our cat. those are our cats. Nugget and Bean. Let's see. I think, uh, how are you doing? You ready to go? I thought what you were doing. Oh, we'll we'll do last. We'll do one last one. Uh, there's Paul for twenty dollars. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> they see me swimming in my waist. Send me money, cause you know that my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Wanna smell my bowl, it's dirty. Come and sniff my bowl, it's dirty. My poop is nasty. It's floating. Please tip me, cause you know that my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Wanna smell my There are live streams from the ISS, but they're like 1080p with a wide lens. So unless the aliens buzz the tower, you'll get a single pixel at best for anything at a distance. And odd pixels have been seen in the distance. They definitely have. Definitely have, Paul. I mean, I, I think it was the ISS where we caught some of the uh, footage of um, different, um, you know, objects going one way and then shooting out another way that they tried to say was space ice. Yes. Um, or, or something along those lines, but it changes direction. So it's, you know, to claim that. So it, was, it ain't nice. Yeah. All right. All right. Take it away. Let's, you ready? Let's, yeah, let's do it. 
Tonight's episode of Gina Story Hour brought to you by KmanCoffeeCo.com. Use the uh, promo code Wi-Files and get yourself some Java 51. So today we're going to be doing the story of the Enfield Horror. Now, the Enfield Horror is not to be mistaken with uh, the Enfield Haunting that happened in England, uh, which is what the movie The Conjuring is based on. The Enfield Horror hap- happened in Illinois. So... Um, the Enfield Horror starts out in 1973, uh, April 25th, 1973. Uh, a man named uh, Henry McDaniel is coming home from work. He's a single single dad, and he has uh, two uh, teenage children. One's um, 15, and the other is 13. Uh, and he's coming home, and it's a little after 10 o'clock, and he sees his lights are on. So uh, he's a little concerned because uh, typically his kids would be asleep by now so he's coming in thinking he's going to be uh ready to yell at the kids or or whatever and uh for staying up too late and he gets home and he walks in and the kids are horrified and so uh he asks them what's going on and they say there's something out there there's something outside and he says well, what are you talking about and, and uh as uh um as of a few minutes earlier, there was something that was scratching at the, the door and the sides of the house um, that the kids are saying, we don't know what it is. And the, the father, who's, you know, uh, takes everything his kids say with a grain of salt, thinks they're, that, you know, the, they got spooked by by some kind of animal, but, you know, whatever. And, and they point over at the air conditioner and they said, look, it tried to even take the air condition out to get to get into the house and the air conditions all uh, askew. So, you know, uh, typical dad that he is, he's uh, ready to go out and, and take care of whatever raccoon is scratch, scratching at, at, at the door. Uh, and uh, he opens the door and a few feet away from him is standing a creature. And it's not just any creature. It's something that is four and a half feet tall has a, a, a really a kind of a short torso and three legs, three legs uh, uh, with that come to like um, kind of little claw, claws at the bottom. And it has uh, two short stubby arms hanging out um, from its body. Are these, kind of. are these, are these are the tiniest images for Gino's story hour ever? What is this like Sorry. Gino's postage stamp hours? Gino's <laughs> flattery. <laughs> This is this this is theater of the mind. <laughs> okay, that's true. That's true. All right, here's one. Here's one. So besides the three three legs that it, that it has, it has these two short arms, and it has big, really large, pink, bright eyes uh, that were as bright as flashlights, um, looking at him. And uh, the whole thing's gray colored. So uh, of course he sees this. He immediately slams the door. Ain't no way he's just going out there to to deal with this thing. Uh, and like any good typical American, he goes back in and he gets his 22. Um, so uh, like most of these uh, stories of in America, they come out firing. So he gets out there and he's shooting. Boom, 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 boom. Sh- takes four shots at this thing. And he knows he hits it. He knows he hits it because it turns around and looks at him and hisses like, uh, like a wildcat. And then it jumps uh it take it takes three different leaps and it and each of its leaps are about 25 feet long um so it covers about 7, 70 to 75 feet in three different leaps which uh, obviously there's nothing that that we know of that any kind of creature that that that's going to do do something like that so now you know he's freaked out he knows he shot at something but it's gone. It, it r- rushes off into the tree line near the train track. So he calls up the non-emergency uh, police number and he, and he reports it. You know, he doesn't want to sound crazy. He doesn't want to sound like, hey, this is emergency. Come out here with your guns, you know. So the police come out and they, they investigate in the, in the morning. As they're investigating, they certainly they find evidence. They find the evidence of the scratching on the door and on the sides of the house. They see what happened with the air condition and more so they find footprints. Now, those footprints, you'll see up, up, up yeah, they, sorry about the size. Those footprints looked very much like a large dog's footprints. Are you sure the dog's large? It looks like mouse. Is it a mouse? <laughs> Look at all the toes. 
<laughs> so the the difference between uh, a large dog and this was it had six pads instead of five. So a typical do dog um, would have five. This has has six pads instead, and of course has has the uh, the the three uh, as they were tracking the footsteps. It had you know six points for the for the feet and set, set of eight like a dog would have running and uh they're able to tell how far apart these these uh footprints were so they could tell that it really did leap uh that that long so that but that's all the police find they don't know what to think of this and they but they do find that um he is a you know, believable and sober guy. He doesn't seem like uh, he'd be making this up for any reason. Um, he seems credible to them. So, um, so they take the the information down, and they start doing their investigation. Since they can't find anything el else out, they start knocking on the neighbors' doors, and lo and behold, they find another person who witnessed it. So a night before, the same night uh, before, uh, like about an hour earlier than, than, than this, there was a kid, Greg Garrett, who was outside, his 10-year-old kid. I don't know why he's outside, outside so, so late at night, but, um, okay. you know, maybe 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock at night. Um, so Greg tells, tells the police that I was attacked by this thing. It ran up to me and it jumped on me and it used those, those, uh, those feet claws uh, and it tore up his tennis shoes. You know, you can't be creasing those J's. That's not, that's a, a no, no. So, uh, so he goes and gets the shoes, shows, shows the police, the shoes all torn up, you know? So, <laughs> so, so, the, so now the police uh, uh, are starting to, to, you know, uh, believe this a little, you know, they come out, they, they see the scratches the footprints. Now they, they got uh, the kid. And so, um, a few days go by and they start, uh, and, um, Daniel, excuse me, Henry McDaniel wakes up in the middle of the night because the dogs in the neighborhood are going crazy. So he goes out to his door and lo and behold, in the tree line at the train tracks, he sees it again. So it's mid, it's like 3 a.m. ish at this point. So he grabs his flashlight and his gun, of course, he's grabbing the gun and he goes out, out, out to the tree line. Now he could see this thing is still on the train tracks, but it is just mosey on, on down the train tracks. It's not leaping like it did when he shot it. And uh, he was deciding what is he going to do? Is he going to, is he going to shoot this thing, chase this thing? But it's three in the morning. He doesn't want to wake up the, the, um, you know, the neighbors or anything by, by, uh, uh, shooting in the middle of the dark. So, so he just lets it mosey on down, down the way. Um, now when I, when I heard this, the only thing I could think of is David Bruce Banner at the end of the incredible Hulk, as he kind of slowly walks away. <laughs> that was the second picture in the, uh, uh <laughs> so that's why that one was added in, in there. So, so he doesn't chase it or anything like that. It's just, uh, you know, kind of walks away. Um, with this, um, it, it's kind of getting out there that there was these sightings. So there's a 70s radio guy. His name is a uh, uh, radio man. His name is Rick, Rick Rainbow. Uh, I'm sure that guy has been to a lot of Grateful Dead concerts. Uh, so he goes out with, with uh, his camera guy and they're looking for it. They have almost like a search party and they see what they think is it, but it's, it's pretty far away. So they get the camera equipment ready. They weren't ready with the camera equipment, really disappointing. And they start to chase this thing. Now they could never get it on film, but what they did, uh, cause they could never find it again. It like ran behind an abandoned building. Once they got back there, they couldn't find it, but they could hear it. So they did get on tape. Uh, it's screaming and, they said that what it sounded like was a, a, a cross between a woman screaming and a baby laughing. Now, the disappointing part of, of that part of the story is that tape has never been put onto the Internet. It was given to another cryptid hunter who has it and has never released it. But to this day, mm -hmm. Rick Rainbow says that's what, what they, they captured. So the day after that happened, Rick Rainbow 
called up uh, McDaniel and, and asked him to be on his radio show, which he did. So McDaniel goes on the radio show and he tells his, you know, tale of uh, aliens or cryptids or whatever uh, this Enfield monster is. Um, and he starts getting phone calls. And one of the phone calls says, you know what? you What you did see was a kangaroo. It makes it makes the most sense. It's got, you know, two legs and a tail, which you could mistake for a for a um, for a, a leg. It could leap, uh, you know, uh, across uh, large, you know, large uh, uh, distances. So uh, uh, so McDaniel says, look, I was I was uh, in the armed forces uh, and I spent a lot of time in Australia. And when I was there. We saw kangaroos all the time. I know what a kangaroo looks like. I they used to come come up to to the camp, and we used to hang out and pet them. So I know for sure what I shot was not a kangaroo, although uh, the kangaroo story might make the most sense. So, uh, so you think it's over? It's not over. So May fifteenth. So this is like an eleven day onslaught of of. Uh, the Enfield monster. So May 15th comes around and more people just keep showing up to, to Illinois, to Enfield, Illinois, looking for this thing. And the police get another call, shots fired. So police show up looking for what's going on. Turns out there's a group of six guys who are uh, formed a, a posse and they're in the woods and they're searching for this thing. And they think they found it and they shot, shot at it. Uh, and uh, they think they hit it, and they said it, it ran faster than they've ever seen an animal run. And these were hunters, guys, so they, they know what they're talking about when, when it comes to animals. Um, however, the police did say they were pretty drunk, so uh, they can't exactly be sure what these guys were shooting at. And, of course, the police want to have uh, something nice to wrap it up and, and not say it's an alien. So that was the, the end of the Enfield monster uh, uh, attacks on Enfield. However, there have been sightings of similar creatures throughout, uh, uh, throughout before this and after this um, in Ohio, uh, Indiana, and a whole bunch of other places. So, um, so again, to, to finish the story here, I'm not sure if we're talking about a monster, uh, a cryptid, or if we're talking about an alien. But it has very similar features to a lot of the aliens we talked about with the gray skin um, uh, and uh, the, the noises that, uh, that, it, that it makes. So, um, so I, I certainly lean towards alien myself. Of course, I want it to be an alien. I believe in aliens more than I believe in cryptids, which is strange. <laughs> and that's what you get for Gino Story Hour. All right. In a story, or there goes the Enfield Enfield monster. That's it, I mean, or the Enfield horror. It, 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 I don't know that one. Tell me something I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Jet set and betting that the creature gave out a hiss. He said, much like a wildcat, judging from his limitation of the sound, covering fifty feet in three jumps through some brush along a railroad embankment that runs near the McDaniel home. State police summoned by the frightened McDaniel arrived too late to spot the creature, but discovered its tracks in the soft earth about the home. Yeah, someone in the chat said, uh, the tracks look like, let me get it, Photoshop copy paste. Uh, they all The images look a little blurry because the, the images were super, super tiny. So while Gino was doing story hour, I AI upped res them. So <laughs> AI makes things a little bit goofy. But... But they, I don't think they're copy pasted. I don't. Think I don't know if those are actual photographs from the police either. Right. All right. Nice. Uh -huh. to know. Another Gino story hour down. Now buy some caveman coffee. Go to cavemancoffeeco.com. Use the promo code Wi-Fi. It's Patrick Duncan. I enjoy the story. Don't buy any of it. Keep up the good work. Oh, and be nice to Victoria. No more pimping her out for foot rubs. Hmm. I think she likes it. I think she likes it. <laughs> There's Don Murdoch. Thank you for the $10. Oh, thank you for stuffing the old tip, you human. 
How about a story on the Rendlesham for, uh, Forest UFO incident? By the way, new listener, and your channel is awesome. Thanks, Dom. Uh, I think we've got Rendlesham Forest on the list. That is a good one. That's the UFO sighting that happened in England. And all the witnesses were military guys, a rank. So that that is a good one. There's not a lot of images, but we'll have uh, Gino do some theater of the mind on it. But uh, there he goes, first-time caller, long-time listener. And there's St. Peter for 50 Canadian. Can't you see me swimming here? I got guppy payments up the wazoo. I just don't know what to do. I need a lawyer or two. Oh, human police tip. Tip. Go ahead and tip. Tip. I need you to tip. Tip. Human police tip. Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Uh, thanks for another great show. Uh, you're a master entertainer with a great head for picking topics. Well, it's your head that picks the topics. They all come from you guys. I had never heard of um, Ingrid Cold before we did the Mothman story. And he came up in the episode. And then everyone was like, well, we want to know what that's all about. Is that how it happened? Or did I make that up? How that happened. What are you, what are you sniggering about? Um, Sarah just gave us a $2 super chat and she said, Jen and Victoria blink twice. If you need help. <laughs> it made me laugh. We keep them, we keep them chained up. We. There's Buckma. Thank you for the $20. Well, I'll be a son of a fish. That's a nice tip. I don't always wear a tinfoil hat, but when I do, it's fistable. That's nicely done, Buckma. There's the comment of the night goes to Buckma. The hidden truth, open your mind for 999. Great channel. Can you do an episode on the alien interview with Matilda McElroy? Um, oh, I love this one. Keep the ideas coming, human. Send that to the tip line so I remember. That's uh, the wifiles.com slash tips. Tobias, thank you for the $10. Thanks to all of you. It's obvious you all work hard. Grateful for your team. I'm grateful for the team too, Tobias, and grateful for your help. I really appreciate it. We couldn't do this without you guys. On a doll. In one of the creepier avatars. Check the media page over on Discord if you get a chance tonight. Hashtag Raptor Gino. So did someone do a... Uh, yeah, I did a cute little send me up, but I don't know. You can't see it on here. I tried to copy it. No. I'm trying to trying to log in, but I got to do. I got to turn the hippo the right way. I got to click. Hold your tongue. All the motorcycles. Then send the code. Oh, for crying out loud. I need you to tip. Tip. Oh my God, there's a crab cat on there and somebody like did AI, but they used a real cat head and real like crab body and it I is think terrifying. I think that's great. Uh, if you haven't joined the Discord yet, definitely check it out. There's a lot of people on there, and they're all just as weird as we are. So I just put the link in the uh, in the chat, but it's thewifiles.com slash Discord. So I think this I think this is what we got, right? There he is. <laughs> there he is. Is that some space weed in my hand? <laughs> yeah, you got, you, you got a little space weed. <laughs> didn't see that. I like all it. All right, Oop. Did you post that haunted doll? That's posted by K Jane 79. 79, actually, that's the year of my birth. <laughs> <laughs> there is Terrell Holt 1, 999, Eucharistic Miracles with the Shroud of Turin. I'd be a good episode. It's, you know, it's 
it, the shroud is debunked, but it has its believers. It's a great story. AO, um, I guess this guy's from the Bronx for ten dollars. A lot of religious people report this contact and write a book. Write a book. Chris Bledsoe seems to be the newest one. He posts a lot of UFO videos on Instagram and recently wrote a book, UFO of God. I don't know that book. No, we'll check it out. Thank you for the tip, AO. And in in the Bronx, there is a greeting, like you know, there's aloha, mahalo, all that. Bronx greeting, you go, AO, and then the response is Gino. Oh, oh. Oh hey. Oh hey. That's how that's how I do. <laughs> Uh, you also say AO if like a like if, if if a child curses at the dinner table or something, then you then you but you draw draw it out. You go AO. That's how <laughs> you do it. It was Chris Gideon uh, Rosario for five dollars. I didn't get to see tonight's ep ep tonight's new episode yet, but my kids Yaya, Sissy, Emmy, and Yona love your channel. Thank you, sir. If Hecklefish could give him love, Aww. Yeah, well, hi Yaya, Sissy, Emmy, and Yona. Jenny, would you sing a little something for them? Something special? <laughs> uh, she, Jenny can't perform tonight because SAG is on strike. That's right. Uh, uh, what, WTR, what, what readings? I'd like to discuss the subjects. Yellowstone, uh, great show. Really enjoy it. Train derailments and earthquakes and how they are being hidden. I have evidence. It'd be great to speak with you. Um, you could send whatever you want to uh, to my email, and I, and I read it. But remember, I'm not an investigative journalist. I'm not a media person. I have no influence. I have no power. I'm a, I'm a guy that tells stories, and I talk to a fish. So if you've got something that, that you think could show evidence of some wrongdoing or something bad, then you should probably go to the papers. Uh, do, are there still papers? Ish. Go to the news, go to the media. Actually, it, if you have stuff about the train derailments, uh, don't go to the media. They're not going to report that. Just looking through that. I didn't even know that we had a media channel. We do, and I wish you could find the one that says fan art because I would love for you to see. That's not the one I was talking about. I mean, it looks really, it looks really real. Like they took a real cat head and a real crab body. <laughs> this one says balls out. I'm not gonna play that one from Zeb the Superfan. Oh, look look at this one. That that looks like a little caveman coffee nitro. That sure is. He's he's got the strong stuff. Yeah, I'd like to try that. That's cold, right? Cold coffee? Yeah, cold brew. Cold brew. I'm looking for the crab cat. I don't. I don't see it. Oh, th is it one of these? Um, no. But that the the one on the bottom left looks creepy as well. Uh, Rob Ashley, thank you for the ten dollars. It's just an old Viking stone asking about your longboat's extended warranty. LOL. I, I, I get. Is that the stone that's in the in the the tree? Asking about our, our longboat's warranty. Very funny. Alejandro, no pasa. No pa, oh, Alejandro, no pasa nada. Um, everyone at Tuesday night Illuminati meetings slash spankings was talking about what Victoria left at the White House. Not professional <laughs> need. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, they investigated that, and in 45 minutes, they decided that they don't know. They don't know. Out there. That's our Secret Service doing a heck of a job. DSK 1317. AJ, would you consider an episode on Kempo? And I mean, if there's a way to make that fun, I don't know how Somehow, to make that fun. It sounds like I'm going to get hit in the face in that episode. I, I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I could make it fun, but I, you know, I don't know what would be fun about it. Audra, Nura, Audra N. I second the, the foot nom. Feet, no, feet, sightings that date back centuries, the DNA full genome, all of the Native American tribe accounts, the Ostman case, there is evidence. Check it out. Mr. Hecklefish says, yes, peace, XO. <laughs> Talking about the big feet here. 
Oh, Bigfoot. That's with the big feet. Got it. Got it. Paul F., thank you for the $10. Yes, I can finally upgrade my vodka to Belvedere. No more swimming in the cheap stuff. Like many others, I was annoyed by Hecklefish for the first few videos. A few months later, I just ordered a Hecklefish plushie. What kind of subliminal messaging is he using to win us over? Just constant irritation. Fear the crab kit. Fear the crab kit. Fear it. Aliens, please say aliens, please say aliens. <laughs> oh. I will be strict but fair lord of these lands, and my serfs will come to idolize me. Uh oh, established titles. It's going to be controversial. Lord Hecklefish coming back. Mike M, thank you for the 999. Do you have any stories you want to do, but afraid someone might come knocking on your door? I don't, Mike, because I've done a few that uh, if they were going to come knocking, they would have. I mean, they still may knock, but uh, but no, I, I think I've gone after I've gone up to CIA pretty hard. I've taken my shots at the FBI, and now you got to put the Secret Service on your list. I don't think they knock either. Uh, maybe like the Enfield Monster no. might knock, but the CIA yeah. not knock. Yeah, if if you hear knocking, then uh, then they're then they weren't coming for you. Mm -hmm. you know, like if you hear the shot, it wasn't meant for you. There is Sire, Seer, Sire, Unknown for 50 Canadian. Ooh. Yo, 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 la la, yo, yo, fish really need some money. I need to buy some stuff. Fish really need some money. YouTube don't pay enough. Fish really need some money. So click the super chat. Like that, that, that. That. Uh, the present is just an echo of the future. The future has already happened, and the past doesn't matter because it no longer exists. Since there could be many echoes, it's hard to say how far ahead base reality is from this one. Hmm. That's deep. We need, we're going to need some of Geno space weed to really understand this. <laughs> to get, the, to get the, the, the true profundity of it. Uh, thanks for that, Sarah. Great comment. Bonds Beastie. And I always love you guys. I wish I had more to give. Hey, Aww. me too. Me too. But look, but look, any, anything helps. You know, I appreciate it. I appreciate all the super chats. They really help keep the channel going. Uh, Patreon is also a great way to support the channel. Or if you want to, if you want to have stuff, get stuff for your money, you can hit up the, the Wi Fi store. And if you do go to the Wi File store and you get some merch, do me a favor, send it in. Go to wifiles.com slash, uh, just click the In the Wild link at the top. And, uh, and uh, we post everyone's picture in the, in the gallery of everyone okay. wearing Wi File stuff. I, I don't know what this is. This is like a, like a, that is that a fantastic. A, a Isn't that Look at all the, everything's going on in the tinfoil hat on the, what kind of creature is that? I think that's a gremlin. I think that's Spike. Oh, I think that's Spike. That's, that's fantastic. Spike. Well, hat. We need that. So, yeah, you go, you end up in the gallery, and all these pictures are at the end of every episode. <gasps> Ooh. Oh. Look at that. A lizard on his lizard people mug. Oh, I love all these. Look at that. He was doing karaoke with Camp Greenfoot. Camp Greenfoot karaoke. I wonder if he's singing one of Hecklefish's songs. <laughs> Ooh, pardon, pardon me. Isn't it amazing what passes for a live stream these days? Boy, oh boy. Chance, maybe. No lie, this is one of the best produced shows on YouTube and written really well. He must mean the other. He must mean the main channel. He doesn't mean this. This is not a professional. This is not the real thing. I wrote some stuff. What is that? What is that? Scrawlings of a madman. Are those your, 
Eugenio's story hour notes. Story hour notes. <laughs> it looks like a it looks like a, a note you give to the bank teller. <laughs> demanding demanding money. I have a gub. I wonder, uh, I wonder what you were in here digging through for paper for. I, I mean I think it adds to the story when Gino just holds up the pay, the photo to the camera. Like that's sure. that's that's supporting media. There's DSDRN. Yo, thank you for the tip. I'm saving up to build a bunker to protect me from the lizard people. They're coming to get you. DSDRN, a longtime supporter of the channel. Uh, how do the how do the strikes affect the show? I mean, it's amateur hour after all. What strikes is DSDRN talking about? The oh, maybe writers. writers, and writers. Oh. They don't affect us at all, actually. Well, uh, in when I'm in LA uh, and I'm trying to get through traffic uh, and I'm beeping at people, they think I'm supporting. I, I support a little bit, but I'm trying to get through traffic here. So, I love that. There's Albert J. Smith. Thank you for the five dollars. Love the new songs. Hecklefish's vocals are next level. They are on a different level. I just don't know if that's <laughs> a better level. There's Paul is back for twenty dollars. Chingy, chingy, bang, bang. Nice tip, human. Hulu reached out, wow, but stay away from mainstream media. I'll up my donations if I have to. And for YouTube memberships versus Patreon, people run into weird payment processing issues with certain platforms. Uh, that's a good point. Maybe we'll set it up. Maybe we'll set up memberships on uh, on YouTube. There is Delphi333 for 1001. If I had that song, Don't You Know My Bowl Is Dirty, Stuck... Uh, I've had that song, but you know, my bowl is dirty, stuck in my head for a week now. LOL, thanks, Y Files. P.S. Illuminati card game would be an awesome show. That's a fun idea. Stream it. Stream. We've got we've got a couple of card games coming out. We've got the Go Hecklefish game that's mm-hmm. going to come out soon. That's that should be fun. And then we're working on another Y Files game that's kind of like if you took Uno with exploding kittens and Clue and mixed them together. Can someone open Google Maps, please? I got lost and ended up in Wacky Town. Dark Abispo, thank you for the $20. Hey, thanks for the tip. Post the controversial videos on other platforms. I'd love to see more spicy takes. Those are coming when I have more time, Dark Abispo. I promise. Uh, Mickey D for five zero. Mickey Z, five zero eight eight for $10. Great show. I ordered the plushie for my wife. Would you ever consider a show on the soul weight experiment, 21 grams? Something, we're doing some near-death stuff, some afterlife stuff, and that will be part of it. We actually talked about the 21 grams experiment during that uh, conversation, so that'll be in there. There's Vortex FX. would love to see a show about Chris Bledsoe, so he came up again, who did the book UFO of God. Love the show. I guess we'll have to look into that. There's Wicked Illusion 1 for $10. Great episode. Keep up the good work. What's going on in that? It looks like an orange wearing a sombrero. R- riding a chihuahua. It, is that what it is? No, it's a dog in a hat. I don't. I don't think so. Nature's Frequency FM, pipe binaural ASMR. Thank you for all your content. I love that you did one about the gateway process. I would think that this particular username would be into that. It is the most powerful tool I've ever encountered for expansion of consciousness, meditation, mental clarity, etc. I tried it, but I, I I didn't keep up with it. I was not able to travel, but you know I'm impatient. You know I did it for ten minutes, and I I didn't get to Mars, so I was like, ah, this doesn't work. But I got to keep at it. Laura Smith, twenty seven ninety nine. My mother used to call the upper class blue bloods. Was that a reference to the lizard people? Ooh, ooh, interesting. Paul's back. Welcome to the fishbowl. It in my fishbowl if you want conspiracy we'll do anything you want but you gotta do something for me we are the channel that can find whatever you- All right. <laughs> there's js jc christmas J- how about an episode on goat man bridge or the hellfire club slash mason connection you guys are great the goat man is a crazy cryptid. 
if that's what he, is that's what I'm thinking of. Eric Stitt, thank you for twenty dollars. Just pre-ordered a Hecklefish plush. You beautiful lizard people, you. Thanks for all you do. <laughs> Yahtzee. 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 Here's Exorcist two thousand fifty dollars. I used to drive a Cadillac. Then I joined this stupid show. The human doesn't pay me much. I need a lot more dough. I, I need, need another, another shackle. shackle. Tip the goldfish. Tip the goldfish. I need a shackle. Tip the goldfish. Tip the goldfish. Thank you guys for helping me through a rough time in my life. In a span of five months, I lost both my parents and my two dogs. That's terrible. Binge watching all your videos really helped me through a rough time. Thank you. And Hecklefish, Mark, and Central California. Sorry to hear that, Mark. That is an awful run that you had there. I'm so sorry. I have to say, we have the best community because, um, like, the third comment, not in, this, not in the chat, but comment on tonight's video, um, one of our fans said that he was also having a rough time because he just lost his brother. And having these videos really helps take his mind off of it. And he probably had 200 comments, replies, and they were all like, I'm so sorry to hear that. My condolences, you know, I feel the same way this happened. And several people were like, this is the best community because everybody was so kind and so nice. And uh, Exorcist, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm, yeah, Mark, you, you should. Um, I I just left a, the link to the Discord. Jump in there and and come say hi. You'll you'll see that it, the community really is incredible, and I get comments every once in a while about how the comments on the on the Wi-Fi videos must be full of bots because there's the comments are so positive. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not bots. It's just this is the kind of people that we attract. Yeah. Uh, JFA 499, have you looked into the three bankers that died aboard the Titanic that all opposed the creation of the Federal Reserve? That's debunked, JFA, but um, that episode is halfway written. But it's debunked, but it's going to be a good episode. That's the conspiracies about the Titanic. It would have been probably nice to release that a couple of weeks ago when that sub went pop. But uh, we'll, it'll, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get It'll be better. Better timing. Better I don't time. believe in the debunking. And Gino doesn't believe in the debunking. David Velez is back looking. Is he a ninja? Mm -hmm. All right. Can't be a cruise ship. Any ship that harbor has to have its color directional lights on. That's a good point. It's one of the busiest harbors in the world. Huge fine. The captain would probably be executed. And for multiple nights, get the F out of here. <laughs> good point. Good point. I pay shekels to the hecklefish overlord. Plus, how do you do? That's from Will D's for ten dollars. Thanks, Will. Jim Brignell, bring now, Jim Brignell for thirteen ninety nine Canadian. Can you alphabetically list your Patreon members at the end of each premiere? There, I did that for a while, but um, they're actually in order of who has contributed the most over time. Is what it is. So, if you're looking for your name, if you're brand new, you're probably toward the bottom. You just scroll ahead. Maybe once in a while I'll mix it alph alphabetical because I, I think it would. Some people want to look for their name, but right now those are in the order of, um, you know, whales to guppies. I guess you'd say, right? Yes. Bonds bestie for ten dollars. That's what I'm talking about. Are you Heckle Fish's voice? No, he does his own voice. Who does your voice? And is that really Shatner? My OCD needs to know. Yes, that is really William Shatner. Captain's log, star date 10.0946.44. The After Files live stream has proven itself once again to be extremely unprofessional. Northern Knights Gaming, 10 Canadian. Hey, we're a film studio located in Canada. One of our producers got us all addicted to your channel. Do you think one day we will see an AI president? Look, it can't get any worse. <laughs> Beyond the Bridge to Total Freedom for $10, New Zealand. First super chat because the parking joke was 10 out of 10. I thought it was a good joke. I have a screen recorded to show people. Ah, I love your vids. Thanks, Heckle Fishing Crew. I thought it was a good joke. 
<clears throat> Cap Cardwell says that that's why Victoria doesn't get bonuses because the money went to paying Shatner. <laughs> exactly. Randy McNeely, big supporter of the channel. I had a friend known as the creature with three legs. He was popular with the ladies. <laughs> Funny stuff. Badoomcha. Contaminated $5. What about maybe aware files? It could even be a limited series that tells local lore from around the country. Love, love, love your content. That's coming. That's com coming. What is this? Like a two headed beast of some kind? It's like a, like a, from Freak. a Greek. Greek epic. It's like a two-headed creature, right? No. Like, um, like if you kill if you kill one of the heads, the other one l l continues to live, right? Yeah. And the where files is going to have a really fun uh, segment in it. Mo, you know, I'm scared, Gino. <laughs> Carlos Garcia, 499. Ah, that's just my ex. No need to worry, everyone. <laughs> Megs for five Australian. Oh, thank you for stuffing the old tip jar, human. Thanks for helping people escape their problems for a little while, guys. I read the comments in the first I read the comments in the first video. Butterfly fly Brownie. Oh. Pray, butter. What? What does it say? It says we're appreciated. Yes. Oh, it says we're appreciated. All right. Well, well thanks, Max. Jake, Jake Baker for 10, uh, 10 Canadian. Love the videos. I haven't tuned into a live stream before. Just wanted to show my support. Well, we appreciate the support and the live streams. They don't. Uh, this is all they are. They don't get any better than this, but they they do get worse. There's Pokey eighty seven. Thank you for the five dollars. <laughs> Ugh, thank you, human. I'm getting killed on alimony and guppy support payments over here. Another first-time caller, long-time listener. What is a story that you have always wanted to do but haven't yet? Cicada. Cicada 3301 is one that uh, that I really want to cover. Um, I'd like to do... Uh, can I even say it? I'm thinking about the, uh, what is it? Is it the Lake City Quiet Pills? Is that the one I'm thinking of? I have no idea. Yeah. Lake City Quiet Pills, an internet mystery. Uh, looking at the chat, do you guys know this one? It's a great story. Um, yeah, Bite My Damn It is looking for Cicada. Yeah, Cicada's coming. I, I mean, we were going to do it a couple of months ago, but then there was some Twitter drama with someone connected to the story, and I just didn't want to do it. Uh, Paul Wright, do the Lake City. So Paul knows that story. The thing is, Paul, it's 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 an, it's intense. It's got uh, it's got sexual themes. Mm. It's got some CP, a CP angle. You know, the CP, the child stuff. It's got oh, some of that. Oh, yeah. But it's, but that's not. That's just kind of a part of the story. It's that story's not about that. It's about the guy, and it's a, uh, it's a great internet mystery that's unsolved. I mean, you did Montauk Project. No. Yes. What are you talking about? Are we are we on the same live stream? Are you doing a different stream at the same time? It also had some some kid stuff in it. That was look, I don't want to judge, policy. but um, wow, I have no idea what's going on right now. There's did Nick you or did you not do a video on the Montauk project? Uh, yes, that was and a good wasn't one. that guy a creeper? Yes, I was uh, Preston Nichols. Rumsey yeah. two Rumsey two zero eight. Love the show in Discord fam. Check out Bulgaria's area fifty one, the Sharina Hole. Wild twists and turns, like the story from Brazil, y'all did recently. Let me know if I can help with the translations. I think that one might be on the list. We just haven't. We didn't. We've had so we've done so many whole stories that we didn't want to be the whole story channel. But uh, Mel's hole is very popular. Everyone wants to know what's in uh, going on inside Mel's hole. Oh, there it is. Hole. Big fan of holes. Ah! 
Here's Mike Suarez for $10. Now here, still now new here, still getting caught up. Ever hear of Spring Heel Jack? I have. He might be on the list. Uh, he might be. He might be. All right. Lake City Quiet Pills. Uh, I think there's a wiki. I'll just give you the over. I mean, there's going to be a ton of stuff on it. Lake City Quiet uh, Lake City Quiet Pills refers to an unsolved mystery about the image hosting site, lakecityquietpills.com, suspected to have been run by a Redditor, and his got his name. Some have speculated that Lake City Quiet Pills was a front for ex-military contract assassins and have attempted to draw connections between the site and the assassination of Hamas officer Mahmoud al Mabouh in late January 2010. Some have also speculated that Quiet Pills is slang expression referring to bullets, which it is. That's... Quiet pills are bullets. Uh, they're also called freedom seeds. So this, and there's so much more to the story. So yeah, I'd like to do that one. I just don't. I don't know if I, I don't know if that'll work. Thanks for the support, uh, Mike Bars. There's Matthew Burns from 1999. Thanks for all the videos. Really enjoy them. And a great way to unwind at the end of the day. Thank you. Please keep the good work. Will do. Will do. And I like the avatar. I can't tell what it says underneath there. Maybe it says Phantom. Molan Lave. What does it say? Phantom? Hard Boss 13, 13, 13 Canadian. Thank you for the new episode. Always appreciated. By the way, it's my birthday. Hugs to everyone. Happy birthday. Gina will say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Can't you moonshot. That's you, Gina. There's M for $10. Oh, thanks for the tip, Ewan. Uh, here's a tip for you. Uh, don't eat clams in July. That's, that's a good tip. Uncle Big Bad here. Just finished the episode. Hats off all. Great job. So did China actually use CISPR to create clones in the early 2000s, or was that debunked? I don't think I know that story, but I like it. CRISPR. I think they left an R out. CRISPR. CRISPR. I'm just going to write that down. CRISPR bombshell. Chinese researcher claims to have created gene-edited twins. Reports trigger shocked reactions and call for regulations around the world. On the eve of international summit here on genome editing, a Chinese researcher has shocked many by claiming to have altered the genomes of twin baby girls born this month in a way that will pass the modification on to future generations. The alteration is intended to make children's cells resistant to infection by HIV, says the scientist. Eugenics. It's happening. Mm -hmm. um, that story's new to me, in, but, uh, but I like it. Here's Emmanuel Franco. Just shekels in the jar. Appreciate that, Emmanuel. Uh, Paul Tiffin for Five Australian. Awesome show. And Lord Hecklefish, would you delve into the relig religious relics world? Or is that subject taboo? No, that's not taboo. Um, I like the religious stories. And I'm not a religious person. I just like the stories. Um, I, I haven't done too many of them because I'm afraid people will see the thumbnail and be like, ah, it's just talking about the spear of destiny. I don't care about Jesus stuff. But I did like that stuff. And it seemed like, I mean, the, the Ark of the Covenant episode did okay, didn't it? Yeah. All the ones that you've done that have religious themes do well. I know someone in the chat was asking for a deeper dive on the Vatican secret archives. That could be a fun episode. Mm -hmm. There is N Mesa for $19.99. Baby, uh, AJ and crew love you guys. Have you talked about the lady in the airplane that wanted to get off American Airlines flight because of that dude wasn't real? Some people say it's fake, some say she's next to Shapeshifter. Yeah, we talked about that on the live stream last week. I think people are still looking for her. Yeah. You know, they've uh, there's uh, a friend of a friend of hers has come out and said that the reason why no one can find her right now is she went on a cruise, that's where she was on her way to, and she made it to the cruise. So, uh, she is uh. 
uh, coming back, and they do think that she will make some kind of response, but she's on vacation, and a well-deserved one. I mean, once, <laughs> once you uh, have to sit next to a shapeshifter. Well, I did see a video that, that the guy, the shapeshifter put out on his TikTok, and he was definitely egging her on. But, I mean, she was being annoying, but he, was, he, he had a, a hat on that said mate, that he was a mason, so she started getting into it like, oh, you know, the Masons secretly want to control the country. And he's like, Ugh, no, we want to control the world. And he just just kept needling her till finally she just freaked out. So I've also heard some debunking that the guy in the green hoodie, that that wasn't real footage. Um, that was a different plane of, uh, that w people stitched in there because you don't see the guy in the green hoodie there. Um, nope. that that's from, it's from a different, uh, shot and people said that the, uh, flight attendants were wearing different outfits and the, the, the luggage, uh, up top had different, a different look to it. Hmm. Now I'm saying, uh, oh, also the friend of a friend says, number one, uh, she doesn't do any drugs and she's not a drinker. Um, not that, uh, plenty of people did say that they seen her drinking. Uh, yeah, I heard that. But uh, you know, she's not acting sober, but she's not it's not like she's slurring her speech or anything. Mm -mm. I mean, I think she's she just seemed, she seemed afraid. I think she just really hates shape the fuck off, And there's a reason why I'm getting the fuck off and everyone can either believe it or they cannot believe it. I don't give two fucks, but I am telling you right now that motherfucker, that motherfucker back there is not real. And you can sit on this plane and you can fucking die with them or not. I, I, I just, I, I, I laugh every time there's the quick pan. That MF is not real. And the person's like, which mother, who, <laughs> <laughs> who ain't real? Who? And you can sit on okay. this plane and you can fucking die with them or not. I'm not going to. Well, spoiler alert, they didn't die. The plane did not crash. They well, if crash. anyone actually knows her, let her know she has an open inv invitation to come sit on Gino Story Hour with me. Open invite. Yeah, she de she definitely acts like uh, Gino's type. There's no question about that. <laughs> Alan Sims goes, three words, why files bingo? <laughs> Love it. Evan, dude, $5. I tried to astral project once, but got scared. Depending on who I asked, I was either about to cross the threshold or pass out. Don't be scared, Evan. Just, uh, just keep an eye on the silver string and you'll be fine. You always find your way back with the silver string. Manuel Franco is back, but this time with a comment, $10. Mad Trapper of Rat River. I don't know that one. I don't know that one. But I'm not going in Rat River. Oh. It's oh. 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 Albert John this oh, is so this, this, what files. This is, a, this is gonna be a what files. Um Albert Johnson, also known as the mad trapper of Rat River, was a fugitive whose actions stemming from a trapping dispute eventually sparked a huge manhunt in the Northwest Territories and Yukon in Northern Canada. The event became a media circus as Johnson eluded the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, uh, sent to take him into custody, which ended after a 150-mile pursuit lasting more than a month and a shootout, which Johnson was fatally wounded on the Eagle River, Yukon. Uh, but Johnson is, suspe is suspected to have been a pseudonym. Huh. He just got the crazy look, right? Mm -hmm. He looks like Keanu Reeves in like his loss. Not Keanu Reeves. Um, Kiefer Sutherland? Kiefer Sutherland from like his lost boy days. He does. AJ, you don't have to believe me, but he does. I like well, not it. in that picture when he's like getting speared when he's dying. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get him when he's angry. Yeah. Well, 
put it in the show prep. <laughs> Carrie Slutes, Carrie Slutes, uh, Carrie S. Yes, thank you for the ten dollars. How do Wi Files feel about covering synesthesia? I have it, and it's a fascinating concept. Not too many fascinating videos. There's even a government registry for it. I'd like to cover it. That's been on my list. Synesthesia is when when people get their senses mixed up. So when you can hear a smell or see a sound or see smell a color, smell a color. So yeah, that would be a fun episode, maybe. Very interesting. Um, Carrie, email me so we can uh, get in touch with you if we do that. Be cool to like just talk to you about it. Uh, there's Kozrat, 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 ten dollars. Not sure if you've done anything on uh, Rocco's Basilisk. Well, now that you said it, now we're doomed because you you're you're safe from Rocco's Basilisk unless you know about Rocco's Basilisk. But once you know it. Now, now you, now you die from it. Great. Right. It's like the ring videotape. It's kind of yeah. like the ring videotape, but you don't even need, it's like if the ring videotape, if you got haunted by the tape without even having to play it, if someone just told you the story, you're haunted from it. Well, then we're not doing it. Um, I actually started writing it when the Y files was a very, very young channel, you know, six months ago. And it was just uh, it was just a little too dark so rocco's rocco's thought experiment which states that an otherwise benevolent artificial superintelligence in the future world would be incentivized to create a virtual reality simulation to torture anyone who knew of its potential existence but did not directly contribute to its advancement or development so what it's saying what the basilisk is is there's this ai right and ai analyzes everybody and unless you unless you actively participate into in the past into bringing it into into existence in the present then it kills you in the past can a white files be done on that that's interesting it is but it's just it just gets kind of dark because it's it's a lot of it's a lot of killing and murder um but when this user posted it on the on the message board for the first time people got really upset because he went into it in pretty in a lot of detail and and the crux of it of it is is as long as you're not aware of the super intelligent ai you're safe right you're safe because you're not you're not doing anything to bring it into existence but you're not trying to stop it either you you're not even aware of it but once you're aware of the ai then you must dedicate your life into bringing it into existence and if you don't there's no reason for it to let you live so it kills you as soon as you become aware of it. <coughs> Look at that. That's the face of someone who can't back into a parking space. <laughs> uh, I, I might cover that. Kozrat. Uh, Kozrat. Cross down cord for $10 Australian. He really worked the hell out of that case is the best laugh I had all week. Best wishes from Darren, uh, ah, from Dan Anda. Thank you, cross town cord. Uh, I'm glad that that joke landed. I like that one too, but I, I, I like, I watched the chat to see like, all right, that joke worked. All right. They didn't get that one. And I didn't get laughs from it. So I'm glad that you got it. Justin Washburn with the thumbs up $10 Canadian. So I'm still wondering if you're going to include DMT entities on an episode sometime. Maybe Justin, but YouTube considers DMT an illegal, it would be promoting illegal drug use. So I have to be careful about the algorithm. Um, but maybe I'm considering maybe exploring the effects of, of tryptamines on, you know, on the pineal gland and on, you know, on the brain. So we, could, we can cover it there. I and mean, we just can't say how, you know, how awesome a DMT trip is. And I, for kids at home, it's not awesome. It's, it's not, you don't do DMT for fun. I love the stream, though. Do you know, you, you, you do it for the stream? You do a breakthrough? KJ, flight attendant, type in as you post passenger vids, try not to laugh. Love your channel. Would love if y'all added a Wi Files Tumblr to the shop. What's a tumbler? Is that's a, a glass? That I guess we can we can they have those, right? Juniper? I, I and you know what? I like her better that way. 
Jason for twenty seven ninety nine Canadian. How about Barbara Bush being Alistair Crowley's granddaughter? <laughs> I can't do that one, man. But I love the story. I can't cover Crowley because because he's just it's a lot of a lot of sex and dark dark magic, sex magic, sex bad dark magic. I unmuted myself. I think AJ muted me. <laughs> me. Uh, Jason, I'd like to do it, but it, the algorithm would punish me. But I, I'd really like to do it. Crowley's been on my list. There's Shelly Hill, ten dollars. Do five more dollars, and you get a private dance. All right, something to look forward to. Charles for five dollars. Idea: If episode content is debunked, blow up an AJ doll and pop it. If not, donate a hecklefish plushie to Bill Shatner's favorite charity, Foot Rubs. I'm a mouse. I'm a mouse in a maze. It's a maze of crazy. Can someone please point me to the cheese? <laughs> it wasn't easy to get Nick to do those voiceovers for us. So shout out to Four mojitos, please. For Nick for taking care of that. First, last uh, for 100 of those. Have you made any videos about the Crossroad Devil? Love the show. My super chat came late last video. My super chat came late last video. All of you rock. I appreciate the, the super chat first, last. I haven't covered that yet. But, uh, might be a good episode because I, I I feel like I might have I might have in my sleep done a deal with the devil because it, the Wi Fi should not be as successful as it is. <laughs> Billy 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 Lou, four ninety nine. Call me crazy. Yeah, I looked up crazy on Wikipedia and guess what? This was on it. Saw Goat Man near Holly Hill, Hartford, Wisconsin. Thought it was the cat late at night and I screamed when it sprinted to the bar. Need a vid. You get you guys know the Goat Man. Mm -mm. Hang on. Now you're muted. Oh, from the kids in the hall? No, not that goat man. Ah! <laughs> oh! Yeah, it's a, it's a good one, right? Shout That's out to That's a naked you. dude with a mask on. Yeah. That's a, a naked dude with a mask on? Yes. How it's do we know? Sweet. Fake feet. <laughs> and fake feet, you say? And fake feet. That's a good story, though. Good story, Lily Lou. Lou, Lou. <laughs> There's Noah C. Hussin. C. Hussin, C. Hussin. Um, can I get the alien story from Reddit from last week out of my head? Oh, can't get it out of your head. Eerie, please keep us updated on the validity of it. I was talking to somebody on Twitter about it. By the way, here's the Wi Files. OMG, the Wi Files. OMG, the Wi Files on Twitter. A lot of good discussions on there. Uh, so I was talking to someone on Twitter about it just this afternoon, uh, another biologist. And said the, he said the guy's totally legit. Totally legit. And if you, if you didn't hear that, that deep dive into that Reddit post, it was a, a bio biochemist who about 10 years ago worked on alien bodies and he went into super, super deep detail about um, the DNA experiments and how the DNA between human DNA and alien DNA was compatible and they tried to splice it together and the alien DNA that they found had <laughs> earth animal DNA in it. If you didn't watch that, it's it's creepy, but it's a lot of fun. It's on the, the Wi-Fi backstage channel and uh, just that talk is isolated so you don't have to you know listen to all this so thanks for the support no i appreciate all the super chats there's isaac freeman for five dollars if you like religious stories read the first few chapters of ezekiel and tell me it's not an alien abduction story yeah i've heard that he saw the wheel <laughs> ezekiel saw the wheel I, I know it's not in the bible but a, an episode on the book of enoch would be fun too because mm. that has a lot of that has you know giants and could be Anunnaki in that story. Here's another two-headed creature, Tyler, 1999. Sister Wilhelmina Lancaster is related to religion, Catholic, I think. She's supposedly incorruptible, and her body was found to smell sweet. Right. I think I, somebody was talking about her before. In, oh, I guess she Yeah, might like be. her corpse didn't do what corpses normally do. 
It didn't rot. Yeah, I just that sounds so harsh. <clears throat> Thousands flock to see body of miracle nun, Sister Wilhelmina Lancaster. Just looking to see if they have a wiki. Oh, this is a very new story. Mm. She's incorrupt. When did she pass? Four years ago, it says. Well, Sister Wilhelmina died uh, age 95 four years ago, but when exhumed by the Benedictine Sisters of Mary on April 28th in Gower, her body and habit, which lay in a simple wooden coffin, were surprisingly intact. That's, it says that Gower is like an hour from Kansas City. Her hands look like a rubber chicken. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just, uh, I mean, is that rude? <laughs> oh, it's funny. No, I mean, I was going to say black don't crack, but. Uh, oh, well, it, it don't. Uh, yeah, Tyler, that's a, that's a crazy story. Love it. Logan Miller, 499. Yuri Geller and his connection to JFK and UFO slash NASA. The last 1% of the documents, maybe UAPs and SSSS. Uh, Yuri Geller's debunked, but I, I don't think I know that connection. Uh, Yuri Geller's uh, the mystic magician psychic. But we look into that. All right, where are we at? Uh oh, the, Spez, the Spetsnaz secret police. $10 Canadian. Would you do an episode on MK Ultra? Sub Project 68? MK Naomi? Project Bluebird? Project Monarch? I don't think I know Sub Project 68. Mm -mm, I don't know that one. Oh, is that another one? Another name for MK Ultra? A, a sub Project of it. Uh, Madness Part 3, Sub Project 68. As the fear of communism, blah, 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 science fiction was, uh, which made a MK Ultra involving anti academics. Yeah, they did it against their will. Support the show. I need to have AI summarize this for me. <coughs> yeah. Writing that down. That's, yeah, that's interesting. Project 68. And there's a podcast about it, so that helps kick off the research. Thanks, Spetsnaz. Uh, uh, Danka, Danka Shane, Jim Brignell, supporter of the channel 699 Canadian. Where does the show go after disclosure? I don't know, man. We're getting close to disclosure. I, I, I think we are, unless it's well, PSYOP. Well, once there is disclosure, there's going to be even more information to go through. So, uh, I mean, it's not like it's going to be reported as thoroughly and why you know as as we all want so you're going to need you know people like us to to talk about these stories get it out to the to the masses yeah i'm looking forward to that hunter tedro for 9.99 oh thanks for the tip cuban uh, here's a tip for you don't eat the yellow snow <laughs> Hi, you love the work. Astrophysicist and aerospace engineer here. The Salvatore Bice mention you made worth made worth shedding some more light. He's he's interviewed a, a couple of other physicists. Would be cool to see. I did, I thought he was very reclusive, but uh, I'd like to do more on him. Uh, Bice is the um, the scientist who has a bunch of patents that uh, that the Navy owns. I think he's I think he's the creator and the Navy is the assignee or something like that. But the Navy's in charge of his patents, and it's, it's all these futuristic like sci-fi sounding devices, anti-gravity, all kinds of stuff, all based on spin energy, which we talked about a lot during the Kazarev episode. So, uh, Salvatore Pais, very interesting. Yeah, I, I, I definitely will look into that. I'll write that down too, because he's got, you could do a whole episode just on his inventions, his, I mean, his patents. I mean, if they make half, I mean, he's got free energy machines. He, he's got all the good stuff. Here is Avid, Avid, Avid Art for 50 bucks. Whoa. Jax is a theft. <laughs> You're flying high on the wings of Y105. I know 
it sounds fishy, but I just can't stand the pond. Human, I'm leaving here tomorrow. It seems to me I'm headed for bigger things. But I got bad credit, so banks won't let me borrow. No, no. No, 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 no. That's why I'm begging. Uh, I'm begging for you to tip me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, great channel. Binged it all in a month. Going to do a portrait of Hecklefish on my channel soon and send it your way. Can you shout out my daughter, Chloe? She's a Heckle fan. Hey, Chloe. Chloe! Appreciate that, Avid Art. Everyone go check out Avid Art's uh, art channel. It's a lot of fun, and look for the portrait of Hecklefish on there. Coming soon. And uh, shoot me an email, Avid Art, and we'll send Chloe a, a Hecklefish doll on me. Emmanuel Franco for $10. I have dream synesthesia. I smell random scents and taste random flavors. I even feel specific pain. When I wake up, it immediately goes away. I've tasted turtle in a dream, but I've never had it. Well, it tastes like chicken. Mm -hmm. That's weird, Emmanuel. You've also got a strange growth on your nose that you probably want to have looked at. <laughs> Laurel P, 499 from Oklahoma. We love y'all on the Y Files. It's our favorite show. We're wondering how long it takes you guys to produce a single episode. About 100 hours. About 100 hours. It takes too long. Jared Peeper Rucks. If the, if the spirit realm is detected with EMF and aliens are silicone life forms and AI is electro currents on silicon microchips, I need a tinfoil hat. Love the show. <laughs> Great job, guys. You definitely do. Here's, here's one. <laughs> that looks ridiculous. Well, I like it. Thanks for that support, Jared Peeper Rocks. There's Jonathan M for twenty dollars. Another awesome episode. Love the religious stuff. I'm glad to hear that. Religious people. Religious people. It goes on on there. I mean, we're figuring it out. It's it's coming along. <laughs> There is Nonsense Nerd for $10. Cha ching I appreciate the tip, human. Time to hit the tables, baby. I used to work at Best Buy and heard a lot of crazy stories about JFK. <laughs> what? I, I mean, I guess, I guess the mob and CIA have to, I, they need TVs too. Midwest Giants and Flat Earth, and here I am now. Never thought I would believe this shot now, too. LOL. I'm as lost like as a missing. penguin in the desert. Penguin in the desert. Oh, he's as lost as a penguin in a desert. You got to have a flat screen TV if you're going to talk about flat earth. <laughs> no. I feel like we're missing part of the story. No, I, I mean, I like it. I like I like, it's stream of consciousness, baby. Uh, Mike G four ninety nine longtime subscriber and wanted to say love the show and love me some hecklefish lizard people hashtag fear the crab cat lizard people yeah, yeah. Uh, would you kindly fetch my tinfoil head um is that a, <laughs> is that a prototype for a crab cat plushie no a fan made us this that's, that's pretty cute. good yeah a crab cat it's pretty good. Thanks for the support, Mike G. I hope you've got your hecklefish plushie. Get those at shop, uh, shop at the wifiles.com. Pre order now, $29.99. Great way to support the channel. Kept I, and that was that was really that was the hard line for me with uh, with Juniper. It's gotta be it can't be more than 30 bucks. So and when you get one, you get your own hecklefish uh, hello my name is card. And it comes in a really cool bag that's got the Y-Files logo all over it. Do you have that there? 
No, I don't. It's at the studio. Don't make a face at me. Joe bought 3K. Gino coming out swinging. <laughs> Raptor hands touching. Tell me something I don't know. Where Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Tell me something I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Jet set and betting at the back of the scenes. Worldwide travel fee with the green. Jack Hare, he's the bone who got his new flow. Change smell, thaw the air. Hey, dippity doppity doppity do. Where's Gino? Yeah, that's who. And yeah, it's true. Danny, I am feisty tonight. It's called lack of sleep. Yep. Emmanuel Frank goes back. Um, you got to get that nose looked at. The only thing you can be certain is your uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Nicely said. Have you heard of the Sierra Big Bigfoot recordings? They're pretty freaky, and there was some scientific research done on it. I have not. Sierra, Bigfoot, recordings. Ever heard this supposedly real recording of Bigfoots? No. Nope. Uh, all right. Look at, all right, here we go. Audio samples of Bigfoot calls. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. sure. By the way, I, I have a little laptop here, and I do have some sounds on there that I use in my podcast. Why don't you send them to me and I will edit them in. And after the completion of our show, Ron was nice enough to send in those recordings. So let's give a listen to those right now. These are Ron's recordings of Bigfoot sounds in the wild. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you heard what you heard the Bigfoot sounds. Now let's go back and hear Ron. Yeah, I do have some sounds on there that I use in my PowerPoint program. You heard his voice? <laughs> Ruben, that's that's this guy who recorded it just recording himself growling. <laughs> is what that is. Maybe he was trying to talk back to it. Maybe he was commu trying to com make communication with the Bigfoot. First ones were very aggressive sounding, and you could hear these these chattering back and forth and uh, very, very dominant. No. Just, just no. When your voice is that distinctive, you can't pull off that... Right, like, like if I played a heckle, uh, played a Bigfoot sound, it was like, "Hey, rah, 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 rah. you'd be like, "That's, that's clearly you." Rephrase, refry, rah, rah, rah. I'm dating some of them. It sounds on there that I use in my PowerPoint program. I don't know how they come through here, but we could try. <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed for him, actually. Yeah. When you said Bigfoot recordings, I thought maybe he called and left some messages on voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ron. It's Big. What you up to? Ron and Big. That, that sounds like a good show. Sounds like a pretty good show. Shout out Super Jacket. Yeah. Branded Mudarks, $5. Hey, y'all, astrophysicist, astronaut, medical doctor, and a cook at my local Apple, Applebee's. So entertaining. Much love, y'all. There's Ebony McKickass, $5 Canadian. Ever do a vid on the worldwide phenomenon of the trumpet, metallic sounds in the sky? Lots of vids on YouTube about it. Um, Interesting one. Love from West Coast Canada. So that's, what, that's the reason I haven't done the sky trumpets yet is because there's a lot of videos about it. But if we can find a cool angle, we'll do it. Here's Zombie Mouse, last super chat of the night for ten dollars. Fear the crib kit. Fear the crib kit. 
I'm a fish and I'm a star. So put more dough in my jar. <laughs> <laughs> Need to buy a tin foil hat. So please click the super chat. We all know the government is the best. The sounds of Bigfoot. So the zombie mouse just. Zombie mouse Zombie Mouse just discovered Wild Files two weeks ago. Love everything about the formula and format. My mother slash aunt slash grandmother. She's my mother and my sister. <laughs> A little shout out to the oldies. A little Chinatown there for the, for the olds. I uh, saw the Bray Road Beast in 2008. That's the dog man. Hope to see more cryptid content. So there were some people in the chat that were saying that um, there were other witnesses on the tape. And uh, so we have to listen to the whole thing. And um, that it's, it's, it's not just him making the noise. <laughs> it's, it's, it's him just making noise. In his backyard in the pond. They belonged to your husband, didn't they? I'm gonna make it easy for you. Keep your mouth shut. And who? My daughter. My sister. I said I want the truth. She's my sister. Oh my God. Mm. She's my daughter. My sister, my daughter. What? I said I want the truth. You can handle it. Too. She's my sister and my daughter. <laughs> big reveal big reveal wow. if you're if you're into movies chinatown top you top spoiled top. it uh i gotta I just spoil it. Get, i didn't even get a chance to watch it <laughs> uh, i did just spoil it. i did <laughs> j2j for 99 hockey jersey and more rush all right man maybe we'll get one more rush in there for you i uh, gotta get my toque on fry up a little back bacon sounds like a canadian asking for, for that with, with the hockey jersey as well and it does. Avid Arts back. Thanks for that. Chloe's going to flip. You want the painting on a mirror or canvas? Uh, do we have a, a preferred medium? Canvas. <laughs> I'd like it painted on, on, on tanned human skin. No. What? I'll donate the skin. All right, Defiant Peon for $50, and here's for our Canadians. A Monday goldfish lives in style, but you haven't tipped in quite a while. I gotta pay my rent, or I'll be living in a tent in Portland. I didn't work at Best Buy, says Defiant Peon, but I love y'all anyway. <laughs> uh, they fill off in 1999. Oh, yeah, tip of the morning, human. A uh, great channel. Would you ever consider doing Rumble exclusives on topics that are taboo on uh, to you, YouTube? Yes, those are coming. Oh, looks like is that the soup and the icon? Is that what I'm seeing there? Mm -hmm. Big fan of the soup. Those those are coming, Phil R. But uh, I need just I need to have some more time in the schedule. Uh, that's going to do it for the for the show tonight. Thanks for everyone for hanging out. I appreciate. It. Thanks for all the super chats. A uh, great way to support the channel is Patreon. So check out the wifiles.com slash Patreon or find us on there for a little three dollars a month to get all kinds of perks, early access to the videos, early access to products. Please say aliens, please say aliens, please say aliens. <laughs> yeah, so stuff like this, Patreon members get first crack at those. 
And uh, twice a week, we do live streams exclusively for Patreon members where you can fire up your camera and talk to me and the whole gang. So that's a great way to support the channel. Or just buy something for the Wild Files store, shop at thewildfiles.com. The super chats are great. The super thanks on the videos are great. And I appreciate everyone hanging out tonight. I hope you had fun. There's Victoria. There she goes. And there's Gino. Great story hour tonight. And there's Jenny. Bye-bye, Jenny. Thanks again for hanging out. And Hecklefish will see you out. The end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear, I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I swam down each, each and every highway, and more, much more than this, I did it my way. I've loved, I've laughed and cried, I've had my fill. My share of losing And now As tears subside I find it all It's all so amusing Do you think I did all that And may I say Not in a shy way Oh no, oh no, not me, I did it my way, for what is a fish, what has he got, if not himself, then he has not, to say the thing. Take care of those waitresses, will you? All right, everybody get home safe. This is Hecklefish. And you know what? I did it my way.